Yes, welcome to Simple Session 2023. We are back in Tallinn, Estonia for Europe's wildest skate and BMX contest with a fully international list of riders from 28 different countries. And right now it is time for the BMX finals. I'm James Threlfall, joined by the legend that is Daryl now, looking flush as ever, man. It's such a pleasure to have you with me. And after yesterday's qualifiers, you must be pumped for the finals today. Well, I appreciate that intro. Yes you have to dress because this is the finals, one of the best competitions in all of BMX, skating, and action sports. Simple session 23, the qualifying was crazy, and that's just a preview of what we're about to witness in our final. Yeah, fully, it's gonna be wild. We saw some amazing riding yesterday, but before we kind of get into who our top 15 are, let's take a look at the course, right? It's a, it's a more compact course in this Pachyola factory that we are now in, which has kind of become the new home of Simple Session for the past few years. Um, it's kind of compact, it's kind of compi uh, sorry, tight, but it's, it's fun, it's fast, and it's exciting, right, Daryl? It definitely does not lack in flavor. Our park designer for the last 17 years is one of the best ramp designers in the world, Nate Wessel. He took our 800 square meters and packed full of surprises out here. It's not a street course, it's not a park course, it's an all-terrain course. So riders with different backgrounds and styles are gonna have options and opportunities to really let their creativity shine. We do have some street obstacles that you'd find in an urban environment like rails, ledges, and drops. We do have some transitions that you'd find in a skate park, like you could see on the far side of the screen, that vert wall, but in this space that we have, riders are going to have to be creative. They're going to have to make it count and they're going to have to utilize the clock and make sure that they're really clean out there. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, man. There's loads of scope for creativity. Like when I first walked into the park, I was like, yeah, we've got some nice back and forth rails. And then the more you kind of get stuck into the park, you just find those lines, right? And the guys have definitely been doing that. The girls also though, in the sister session, which you were calling yesterday, Daryl, were crushing it. And you're gonna be joined very shortly by the winner of that, Bethany Hedrick, in the studio. But before we get there, I wanna talk about the fact that Simple Session has a whole schedule of events going on throughout the week. We've got the legendary after parties, but we're also having street jams all week long and one of those went down as the Visit Estonia jam at Freedom Square. Let's take a look what went down. Today, right now, we are at the legendary spot at Tallinn Freedom Square. A simple session has totally spiced up things, so let the jam begin. The place here is amazing. Like I love coming to this city and it's like, especially in the weathers like this, it's beautiful. Like cruise around, we've got all the street spots and like even just riding around the city is amazing. Like it's awesome. Man, the vibe of Simple Session is one of my favorite events. Um, they do such a great job with being hospitable to the riders, from like curating fun events in the city where everyone can come and hang out, to doing the best after parties I've ever been to. Simple Session is chill vibes, good times, and proper BMX, people just getting together and, and bringing the community together and giving people something something to look at, something to get excited about. Um, and yeah, it's great, it's great to be here. Well, there you have it. Seeing a little bit behind the scenes of our street session here at Simple Session. One thing that this event has been known for throughout the 23 years of history is always pushing forward and making new platforms for riders. Well, in 2013, the first time ever, we had the sister session event where we had our female competitors out here. In 2023, we have brought it back and I'm actually up here in the booth right now with our 2023 sister session champion, Bethany Hedrick, who rode awesome yesterday. And I gotta say, Bethany, how does it feel to be a sister session champion? It feels awesome, thank you. <laughs> Well, you really attacked the course in such a great way. What were your thoughts? And we can maybe get even just inside of a rider's mind, a champion's ride, when you approached your two runs yesterday. 
I wanted to make sure I hit it all the bases, whether it be just grinding rails, doing stalls, getting air, having speed, doing tricks, just have fun and do my thing. That's all I wanted to do. Well, you definitely did that catch and air, especially on this bar spin transfer that we're seeing. That was one of my favorite moves of the sister session contest. And you had a lot of variety. Do you think that's what it's going to take for our competitors today on the course? Yeah, 100 percent. Well, I got to say, you're an inspiration to riders all around the world, not just female riders, but anything you want to say to maybe a female rider thinking about getting involved in BMX? Do it. Don't be intimidated whatsoever. It's going to be the best thing you'll ever do. Well, wise words right there. Thank you very much for riding and ripping. Any closing words you want to say to some of your sponsors or maybe fans at home watching? Uh, shout out to GT BMX. Thank you to Ben Ward and Jeff Z for just supporting me and believing in me. Also, thanks to Odyssey BMX and mom and dad. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I'm going to be cheering you on not only for the rest of 2023, but hopefully in 2024 when we're back at Tarta 2. Congratulations, Bethany. Bethany, great to have you in. Congratulations, Bethany. And we are going to take a look right now at our top three qualifiers. So Joe Jarvis taking that third place spot. Absolute crowd favorite. Daryl, can you just talk to us about Joe's run? Yeah, Joe Jarvis is always a favorite here because he gets the full pull experience at Simple Session. It's not just about the riding. It's about the partying as well. But Jarvis made his focus on the course. His two runs were dialed. Look at that thread the needle and a double peg up the rail 180 had to narrowly miss his front wheel on that upright but he's just able to fight traffic smooth 360 very impressed with his consistency you see him taking some technical almost flatland tricks right there balancing up on that front peg with the whiplash around and then he actually upped the ante in his second run and you can see he puts it in reverse windshield wiper style and then pops cleanly to his pedals impressive with Jarvis's riding I think we knew it was on when the top came off for the second run as well. Checking out right now though, in second place, qualifying for today's finals, Murray Laubzer. Well, I gotta say this one was not surprising at all because when we all arrived to Talon, Estonia, I had an opportunity to ask the riders who is looking good in practice and everyone was saying South Africa's Murray Laubzer as he was just dominating with tech consistency on the front and back wheel. You see the nose press across the long driveway, a smooth bar spin coming down. Yeah, taking it over that hitching post, absolutely crushing it. And finally, we move to our first place qualifier and defending champion out here at Simple Session 2023, Boyd Hilda. We're seeing Boyd's confidence, another year on the course, turning into more of a veteran out here at Simple Session. And it showed how he just flowed around a lot of speed and style, and every trick he did was so clean, especially that one-handed lofted tabletop transfer. And he had a lot of tech moves, utilizing the pegs as well. Good stuff for Boyd Hilder. Well, there we go. We mentioned Boyd Hilder there, our first place qualifier. He is down with the third member of our team right now, Tuli Yevstignev. Boyd Hilder, the defending champion of BMX Street 2022 for Simple Session. But I also did a winning interview with you in 2019 when you won BMX Park. When you can choose, which one would you choose? Street of Hog? I don't know. I couldn't pick one, to be honest. I love the mix. All of it gets me stoked, and the blend of it makes it funner for me. So you qualified first. What do you think about the course this year, and what can we expect from you in the finals? I don't know. There's sick wall rides, rails, hips. There's a bit of everything. Try and use it all. Let's talk about the general level of riding this year compared to previous years. What is your take on it? Oh, the boys are going off out there, bouncing off everything, tic tac in, throwing bars in spots that they shouldn't. Well, not shouldn't, but they're fitting them in. It's sick to see. Well, awesome. We can't wait to see you bouncing off different things and obstacles. And uh, yeah, good luck to you in the finals. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you guys. Woo. Thank you very much, Tuli, and best of luck to Boyd there. We're going to see if he can make it back-to-back -back wins at Simple Session this year. But we're going to jump ahead a little bit to next year right now, because for the first time in 20 years, Simple Session is going home to Tartu. And we've had Simple Session OGs, Matters Apps and Alex Kennedy, checking out this week what the city has to offer. Oh. Heavy. 
Heavy hit. Insane. Welcome, everybody. This is Matters. We're here in Tartu together with Alex Kennedy. And we're going to see the streets and see the hometown of Simple Session. Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, this is like my 12th Simple Session. Uh, I love coming to Estonia. I love Estonia and like it's been the, the place where I learned to ride contests, so it has a place in my heart. So obviously Tartu is the original location for Simple Session and in 2024 we're going to be coming back here, uh, which, which is amazing I think. And now let's go see the park where it all started more than 20 years ago. There was a vert ramp there where I did the first drop in on a vert, mini ramp, theme park. And I put my tent up right there where there's a tennis court now. Yeah. And now there's only three little obstacles. I've been coming to Simple Session since 20 years and it's evolved so much over the years. It's gotten so much bigger, more global. So I'm happy to see that Simple Session is coming back to its hometown. Tartu 2024. See you there. Yeah, so good to have Matters and AK. Like I say, two Simple Session OGs been coming to the event for so many years, heading to Tartu, where we are gonna be for Simple Session in 2024, and we hope that you'll be there with us too. But right now, we are super close to getting into the BMX Finals. We've got 15 riders out here today, and we're gonna hand down to the park for Daryl, who's with Andy Zeiss right now, to run through our rider list. It's not about me. And it's not about the people of Estonia. It's about the 15 riders behind our back. So are you ready to meet your finalists? Then with further ado, it is an absolute honor and pleasure to introduce you to the number 15 qualified rider all the way from San Diego, California, 25 years of age. Make some noise for Parker He. Our next rider from the UK, Edinburgh, 25 years old, Michael Dixon. And that handsome gentleman on his left side, originally from Medellin, Colombia, currently residing in Barcelona, Spain, representing Kink Bikes, makes some noise for Santiago La Verde. Our fourth rider in the final, coming from the USA, from Kennewick, Washington, doing it for Fiend, 24 years old, Johnny Rakis. I'd like to consider him an absolute Simple Session all-star. There is no Simple Session without this gentleman, currently sitting in Frankfurt, Germany, the Red Bull and Federal rider. Who are you right now? Where is Bruno? Our next rider at his second Simple Session appearance and second time in the finals from Hastings, England, 24 years old, doing it for the source, Stuart Chisholm. And you keep that noise going, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the land.
our next rider, 27 years old, doing it for we the people. He came in fourth place in 2022. He'd love to be on that podium. From the UK, Jordan Godwin. Our next contender is no stranger to Simple Session Finals. Also 27 years of age, originally from Nigeria, currently living in Madrid, España, the Red Bull and Flybikes rider, Courage Adam! Our next rider, 28 years old, doing it for Shadow and Sabrosa from a Boston, Massachusetts. He's no stranger to Simple Session because he premiered his video part a few years ago. Hands together for Matt Ray! We've seen him on the dance floor and behind the DJ desk last night at the Club D3. I'd like to call him Mr. Kendama, an absolute Simple Session All-Star from Minneapolis, the PSD rider, Reed Star! Our next rider hails from Germany, 27 years old, doing it for Vans. He's an absolute rail technician. Hands together for Killian Roth. Where our next contender normally is, there normally is a 20 pack just sitting around the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, how about you give it up for the federal rider, Joe Jarvis. Our second place qualifier coming from Cape Town, South Africa, 27 years old, riding for Vans, hands together for Maury Lobster! And to complete the 15-pack finalists, we've just seen him on the big screen interviewed by Tooley. You know him, you love him. From the Gulf Coast, Australia, 27 years old. Yeah, big love to Andy down there with Daryl. Our top 15 are set up and ready to go. And the format we are going to run with today is two one-minute runs. If you were watching qualifiers yesterday, you will know there was overall impression. So we took both run scores, which meant it was super high pressure yesterday. And we maybe saw some people playing it a little bit safe. But in the finals, we have two one-minute runs and best run counts. So will we see a safety run and then maybe stepping up in the second run? Or will we see two attempts at some absolute hangers. It is all gonna go down here at Simple Session 2023. BMX Finals on the way, right after this. Welcome to Simple Session 2023. Daryl now running back into the commentary booth from the park, getting everyone suitably amped down there. Man, the people here in Estonia are ready, right? Yeah, I don't know if I can really express just how much love there is for action sports here in Estonia. We really have had over the 23 years a relationship build with all of the athletes, all of the riders, and the crowd. 
If you haven't been here, start planning for 24. That's all I can say. But right now, if you are in the building, these are coveted seats. There are advertisements all over the city for every single rider or person or fan to be here in Pujala for this final. The energy's electric. Yeah, absolutely. We can see our top 15 on the board there. We're going to be reversing, uh, starting, sorry, in reverse order. Parker Heath, our 15th place qualifier, kicking things off for us today. So, you know, we were saying yesterday that, yeah, you really want to just make it into that top 15, get through, but the advantage once you're in that top 15, if you are in those higher places, you get to see those riders go first before you and you can strategize around that. Yeah, James, that's an important thing to bring up. The way we're doing this final, our riders are going to be going in reverse order from qualifying, as you mentioned, but we're just doing one heat. They are going to have two 60-second runs, and it's going to be a best run counts format. So we might see some strategy where some of the riders might wind up trying to do similar runs. They're not going to be penalized for, for that. Sure. But the judges want to see perfection out there. We have three judges who are lifetime riders. You can see Bart de Jong from the Netherlands, Marcus Vilke from Germany, and Tom Sillens from Latvia. These three riders are lifers. They have dedicated their life to the sport, not only as riders, but also careers. Tom Sillens has his own ramp company building, Mindworks Ramps. Marcus Vilke, he's an X Games silver medalist back in 2000 for Street, but he runs Freedom Magazine which is a German publication, and Bart de Jong has Fat BMX Network, which keeps up all the date in BMX, and he's been instrumental working with the UCI to help BMX get into the Olympic Games. Yeah, absolutely. First rider in, going to be Parker Heath, realizing in that final link as well, before we came to the commentary booth, I said maybe we're going to see some hangers. Uh, I mean, I was meaning bangers, but yeah, I'm sure we're going to see some two bangers as well going down in the finals today. Parker Heath kicking things off for us today. Parker is such an exciting rider to watch. He's doing it for GT, Etnies, and demolition. He also just has a good style when he's riding, but you see those chiseled cheekbones? He's actually a model as well, so he's one of these riders that just has good style all around. You like hanging out with them, the clothes fit well, the riding fits great, and we're gonna see how he's respected and represented here in the finals, because riders can pick any line they want, and they can start from any vantage point. So essentially, this course Nate Wessel designed and built is the canvas, and the riders are their paintbrush and they're going to have the 60 seconds. And right now, Parker's starting off on the Radio Bike Co. sub box with an X-Up stall. Yeah, absolutely. Coming out swinging. Oh, just slipping that second trick. But Parker, definitely one of our more transition-based riders out here. Last time, a simple session was in 2021. So making it back a couple of years later. Now, James, I want to highlight, if a rider winds up slipping a pedal or not having a great run, they're not necessarily penalized if they step off their bike, like maybe at an Olympic qualifier event. The judges want to be very clear. They want to see creativity, and they want to see a rider utilizing the course like that X-Up grind up to bar spin out. Unfortunately, you saw that his bike got a little bit away from him, and I don't think Parker is going to wind up finishing out the clock. He could have if he wanted to, but he's going to wave off the last yeah. 15 seconds. Yeah, for sure. I think that's it. You know you're going to have to hit a certain standard here in the finals, for sure. And um, Parker just having a couple of falls. That X-Up still up on the radio bike sub box, kicking things off. It was a nice way to, to get things going. And then just unraveled slightly from there, but we still saw some goodness. Yeah, nice big old gap over that driveway section. Gapping from the volcano, taking the 270 or the three, depending on which way you look at it, over to the Red Bull hip. Yeah, shaking his head. He knows that's not quite it. But the good thing, like I was saying in the build-up, is that we've got two runs and best run counts. Yeah, Ryder's going to have that opportunity to get a score 0 to 100. So his is going to be a 60.33, a lot of room to move up there. And he's going to have his first option. But we're going to move on to our second rider from the UK, also riding for GT bikes, Michael Dixon. Yeah, coming out of Edinburgh in Scotland, 25 years old. He's just been progressing. He's developed some unreal talent over the years on the bike. Yeah, and he's become a real standout rider from the UK. We've seen that progression as well at Simple Session. His first time being here was back in 21 when we were at the Pujala factory. And now he's here in the final. 
Bar spin to Crooked Grind to bar spin out. That was a great connection on that rail. So anytime a rider can trick in and trick out, it's definitely respected. Getting that 360, bonking the front peg right there. Checking in with our Red Bull wall ride. Oh, slipping some pedals. Come on, let's see if Michael Dixon can get it back together. Now, James, you've competed skateboarding many a times at Simple Session. What do you think goes through a rider's mind when they do have a mess up like that? Oh, uh, man, like we've been saying, you know, I'm really bad at recovering from a fall. And um, yeah, I'm always jealous of the guys that can just get back on and make it happen. And Michael Dixon seems to be making that happen right now. So, yeah, absolutely fair play to him. The guys that can have that fall right at the start of the run as well and go, I'm going to get back on my board or my bike and just get straight back into the zone. I, I massively commend those people, you know? Yeah, so much of BMX skateboarding, it's all about making that headspace, kind of making the impossible possible in a lot of ways. And that even just goes with your riding or your runs, even if you're not pushing yourself, walking that line of tricks that have never been done before. Yeah. So Michael Dixon going to ride out the clock right there. Happy that he was able to get that pull, but let's take a look right here. Bar spin, crooked grind, bar spin. Now, when we say crooked grind, that means that a peg is on one side of the rail and the other peg on the opposite side of the bike. So you're almost kind of just scissoring along that rail. Right there, we see that crank arm slash pedal slide coming down, getting that transfer over, known as the toboggan right there. Turning the bars, grabbing the seat, dipping the front end down. Nice little toothpick hanger bar spin known as a toothpick that's the front end of the bike you're seeing that one more time the back end or back peg rather is the ice pick right there amazing well we saw Thule down at the side of the park talking to Boyd Hilda earlier and she's checking in with Michael after his first run of the BMX finals Michael this is your third time at simple session but it's your first time in the finals you had a pretty solid run how would you comment on that um yeah it felt good I messed up a little bit kind of halfway through, but I think I kept my momentum well. Did well to just keep going and then land everything else clean. So still work to do, but happy with that. So let's talk about messing up. I mean, it happens to everyone, right? How do you recover from it? Um, just got to realize that time's not going to stop. People are still watching. You've still got a run to do. Time's limited, so you don't want to let it get to you. And I know that people appreciate someone that can recover, mess up stuck it going and then just not let it get to them in the head. And the main thing is still to have fun, right? Exactly, have fun and just do what you can. You can't change the past, so just gotta work on it and just enjoy the moment. Absolutely, so go have fun on your second run. Yeah, of course. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, back to you guys. Thank you very yeah, much. a decent start for Michael Dixon. And if you are in the live chats right now, big, big love to you. You can get in touch with us using hashtag Simple Session. And this guy was getting so much love in the chats yesterday. Santiago Laverde. Yeah, and qualifying, he just looked beautiful. The way that he linked the whole course together. He actually had one of my favorite moves, the tabletop and then the one-handed version of it. He got some love on Tabe Lord's Instagram page, dedicated to the art of the tabletop, and they were very psyched to see his execution. So maybe we'll see that today, but he does have some of the best crank arms in BMX. Look at that. There's a 270 version with the transfer laying that tabletop over. You see that the 60 seconds has started. There we've got a bar spinner. Here we come in. Boom! That's exactly what we were talking about. The one-handed tabletop just laying that bike over, showing the bottom bracket of his kink BMX frame to the crowd. Yeah, Jake in the chat saying this course looks so fun to ride and Santi out here just finding some of the slightly different lines already, switching things up. And the judges are going to love that, you know, like we know every year that Nate Wessel brings a really creative part to Simple Session. And if you can find those slightly different lines and do something different to, uh, to everyone else, you are going to stand out massively. Taking that crank up over the driveway rail. Work, back through. Working out the clock. The final moment sometimes can be the most important. Yes, wall ride to downside tail up. And you hear Talon Estonia going absolutely mental for good reason because that was a huge exclamation point at the end of his run. I was just highlighting how important that is to let the judges know, hey, 
I'm doing what I want on this course. I'm not quote unquote lost out there. I'm sticking to a game plan and I can throw down a big hammer at the buzzer. And we saw that right there with Santiago Leverde. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Looked like he kind of clipped that wall on the way back in, which um, forced him off the bike, but definitely a good amount of roll out there. The judges aren't going to care about that. There's that one-handed table in front of that section there. The people you can see behind, that's riders and plus ones. So he's literally in front of the other athletes going, check this out. And we were saying yesterday, our hyper photographer sat under that with a nice old fish eye getting that in full HD. Yeah. Beauty table right there out of the bar spin to Feeble Grinder. Right now, the cherry on top of his run, that wall ride, the downside tail whip just floating onto his pedals. Louis Roberts in the chat saying level 100 steez boss. He's got to be happy with that first run. And Tuli is down with him now to find out. <laughs> Santiago, I mean, you absolutely killed it out there. What is your take on your own run? Uh, I don't know. It was something that I had planned since yesterday, but it was just, you know, it was just like, I just wanted to put it down for the crowd and... You absolutely did. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. They motivate me. I'm stoked. So you live in Barcelona, so that gives you like a whole year round to practice and there's a lot of BMXers in Barcelona right now. Do you think that gives you an advantage here today as well? Definitely, definitely. I feel like when I moved to Medellin, that was my high school and when I moved to Barcelona, it was my university. Like, I learned so many things when I moved there and I met so many people that I'm so thankful for meeting and I'm thankful for, for living in Barcelona. It's definitely a nice place to be. So what is your plan for your second run? Are you going to just try to improve the first one or do you have some surprises for us or you just keep it to yourself? I don't know. I will just try to do my best. I have some things planned, but they will run, they, they, they will run and we was pretty much but like something that I wanted to do and let's see what we do for the second run. Well, great. We can't wait to see your second run and yeah, congrats on the pretty much perfect first one. Thank you so much, Tuli. Santiago making it happen and now Daryl I know you love a set of jazzy pants and Johnny Rakis is bringing the heat right now yeah you can see those fists of fury down there I know his brother mom and dad are watching and I say his brother because you can see those strikes he's a martial artist he trains and practices with his brother when he's not on BMX which is really cool to see him just being such a well-rounded athlete Johnny Rakis was crushing it in qualifying he actually rode earlier this summer at X Games and look at that combo the bar spin landing in the X up and grabbing behind his seat and then throwing that steeze coming down. Ray Kiss going off the side, 360 bar spin. Trying to then get his composure back, bunny hopping into that transition. Let's see if he can really stay focused. Toothpick 180 hanger bar spin, good combos. Yeah, really making the first 30 seconds count. Just coming off the back on that though. Getting back on to see if he can make the final 25 seconds work. Rakis also into martial arts. And uh, yeah, you were calling uh, maybe a, an influencer boxing martial arts scenario, maybe? Do not put words in my <laughs> mouth. Do not put words in my mouth. I said, hey, maybe Johnny and I will spar and have some fun. And next thing you know, the chat goes off saying, hey, we're calling out a fight. And there's a brawl and this and that. I have nothing but love for Ray Kiss. And also, you saw those punches, you saw those guns, and you saw that run right there. Trying to up the ante, getting super technical on those combos. BMX freestyle is so much about risk versus reward and you have to play how you're going to wind up pushing the envelope for your riding. Bar spin landing in the X up straight into that Ruben Alcantara-esque wall ride. That's when he has that nose dive down. I love that ground chuck. Then twisting the little bit of extra style. Bunny Hop 360, you can see how much force and pressure were on his tires. This is one of the biggest moves of his run, the bar spin, and then landing with his back end on the opposite side of the rail with that toothpick. Again, that's that front wheel. And you can see how many spokes he actually tweaked out of his back wheel, just showing you how much pressure and force was there. Yeah, Scott Lindsay saying that one was awesome. Braptech saying, big send, let's go. So people enjoying that run from Johnny Rakers. But right now, we're going to the German that needs really no introduction out here, doing it for Red Bull. We've got Bruno Hoffman taking to the course. Bruno Hoffman grew up in the magazines. 
He has been competing at Simple Session for so many years, and he's pushed the sport of BMX Street to all new levels right here. We're seeing him start things off with the 360 on the step down, and Bruno is going to do a very tech grind right there, hitting that front peg. And I just also want to highlight, if there's anything that you and I can't see from our announcing perspective, the judges have a perfect clear shot. So if there's something with maybe opposite or switch and we can't see from our house, do not worry, it doesn't impact the scores. And as much as I'd like to think the judges are listening to everything we have to say, they don't hear us. So just want to put that out there. As Bruno is 30 seconds to go, the Vans rider getting a wall ride, coming in fakey, and I like the way he caught that whole transition and popped out onto the deck. Yeah, taking a 270 over the Red Bull hip as well, linking together all the aspects of this park out here. Yeah, oh, taking the ice pick, just dropping the front peg over that driveway rail. Final five seconds. Oh, up close and personal with their fans right there. You saw that he did a little bit of a dark side Smith 270 back in, getting some props from our fellow competitors. So as much as this is a contest, these BMX riders are part of the brotherhood and sisterhood, and they want other riders to give their all that day and have a solid run, because it'd be great to say, hey, I beat so-and-so when they were at their best. Looking for that combination, hopping over the rail. Right here, though, I love how in control he was, landing fakey. You see as that free coaster, that's on the back wheel. The technology has been increased in the last few years, so riders can travel backwards without having their cranks engaged, and some, it opens up some new tricks for. Amazing, the kids on the other side of that fence as well, I think, fearing for their lives for a moment. But Bruno is down with Tuli to chat about his first run in the BMX Finals at Simple Session 2023. Bruno, you are an absolute Simple Session veteran. You've been coming here since 2008. Can you point out one specific year or maybe several which has been your favorite so far? Um, I don't know. I like the change of scenery from the old one to this one. But every year is good for its own reasons, so it's hard to pick one. And you're such a strong technical rider. I mean, we just saw your first run. Is there anything surprising you'll bring on the table in the second one? Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to play it a bit safe on the first one and maybe change it up a little bit in the second one. But pretty happy, so it's OK. Coming from such a strong athlete, what is your favorite part of the chorus? What is something that people should keep their eye on? Uh, I guess the centerpiece is super good, just because it has a lot of possibilities. But no, it's a very unique course, so everything's cool. And you're, you're ranked second. Cheers, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait for your second run. Thanks, Bruno. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Yeah, a 78.66 for Bruno Hoffman. Sitting just behind Santiago Laverde. And we are going to see what Stu Chisholm from the UK can do right now. We have seen Stu Chisholm develop into a pro athlete almost before our eyes here at Simple Session because he got his start in Hastings, the Battle of Hastings competition. Last year was his first time and he made the finals, which is a big deal. There's a lot of pressure when you're riding here. We are broadcast all over the world. Millions of viewers check out this event. It really helps make a name for yourself. And now Stu Chisholm, second time at Simple Session, second final. That is some great consistency. He's recently a father and it's been fueling his riding. Let's see, over ice pick to bar spin. Very smooth on that. He'd locked into that ice pick where his body weight was in a perfect spot and able to get that hop and throw the bars. Turning things around with that foot jam on that front wheel. He has no brakes on his bike and he gets that balance point by having that and then kicks a tail whip out of the double peg up the rail, James. Yeah, I was chatting to Joe Jarvis in the hotel yesterday um, saying congratulations and he was saying, do you know what? I'm so hyped that Stu, my best mate, is in this final with me. That rider camaraderie is real important. He's putting on the gas, looking for a combo on big tail whip off. And you're talking about Joe Jarvis. Yeah. You see him down there head banging right there, getting hyped. He's actually on the course <laughs> to get a good perspective. <laughs> And that was what we talk about, that rider camaraderie. It is a competition, but you want to see each rider bring their best. And Chisholm getting a backflip with that 180, known as the flare, kicking a tail whip. And he's got time for a final thought, hand plant on our Red Bull vert wall. Really nice showing. The crowd absolutely loving that. And I think as well, we talk about that camaraderie, man. Like a simple session, 
it's kind of like no other contest I've ever been to. I've been to contests all over the world and just the, the good vibes, the good times, and yeah, the crew here are just second to none. And it really is a global event. Even watching, I know back at Source Park in Hastings, Tom Creasy, Matt Brown, everybody's watching the feed right now, cheering on Stu Chisholm as we see that tail whip with great execution, clean to the pedals. He didn't land on his crank arms or anything. Going up on that back peg on that hitching post, you see he has to shift his weight over, and he has a very clean re-entry grabbing that transition, and the rider wants to land as close to the top of that ramp. Some of them have coping, some don't, but if you land in that sweet spot, you can utilize your body weight and momentum to pump and generate speed. Yeah, Mike saying that was sick. Alan saying Jarvis really is the whole hype man for Simple Session. And then RKWD BMX also saying there's nothing simple about this session. Am I right, lads? <laughs> you are not wrong. And these are the judges that we're looking at that are calling the scores out here making sense of the action. And Stu Chisholm goes to the top of the leaderboard in a big way, kicking things off with an 81-6-6. Sending love to Daz Happy whilst doing it. Okay, let's head to Australia, Melbourne, for Jackman Hins. Up next for the first of his two runs in the BMX Finals at Simple Session. He is another rider. This is his second time at Simple. Second final, which is really cool. He's riding for Federal Bikes. We're gonna keep that energy in Hastings for a minute. I know that's where Federal is out of. Stu Dawkins, Colin, all the crew are cheering him on. Wanna see him really just continue because two years ago, he really got a name for himself in the Federal video. And he's kept that momentum, starting his run off with a double tire ride across the entire length of that rail. It's a round rail, round tire. Fires, hard to have the balance, and then had enough pop to cleanly tail whip off. Jackman tossing the bars, coming back at us. Again, riders can choose any obstacles that they want to hit, and if they have a mess up like that, come on, Jackman, get your head in the game, because you can recover and still make the most of the clock. Want to remind everybody, it's two runs, best run counts. So we're going to see if he can kind of keep his head in the game and if this is going to be the run that will maybe stick for him or some riders will just wave it off and say, you know what, I'm going to save it for the next run. Yeah, coming through with that rail ride. I'm not sure that was all he was looking for there. And yeah, stepping out, knowing that one's going to be a bit of a throwaway. He's got the pressure on him now for run number two. But some riders just thrive on that pressure, you know, when you're really, really under that heat. Let's take a look at that double tire ride. You see the way he actually adjusted his cranks right there while on the rail to kick that around. He has very unique tail whips. Big shout out to everyone watching down in Melbourne. I know that the anchor BMX guy, Sweet Lou Reeves, cheering on the rider, Vans, Federal, Mafia, Dead Leisure. That was Jackman Hens. Yeah, if you are in the chat right now, let us know where you are watching from. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to shout you out. And uh, Jackman is down with Thule at the side of the course right now. Jackman, you just finished your first run. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but I'm pretty sure you're going to fix those little things in the second run. Now, what is your take on it? Yeah, it wasn't too flash that, but I'll try to fix it up a little bit for the next run for everyone, for sure. <laughs> Hopefully it goes well. But you're such a stylish rider, and I can't, like, I can't miss your nails. I mean, you have better fingernails than I do. <laughs> and also your earrings. What is your, what is your style take? Where do you get all the inspo for that? I really don't know. I just like, it feels good doing it, so I'll just do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Well, super fun. You're such a fun person on and off the course, and yeah, good luck to you in the second run. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Jackman. Thank Lang's you, Julie, on the Jackman. chat right now. He'll be back in Jackman watching from Australia. Louis in but North now, Wales, Salty BMX of SoCal, and Calvin Kong in Singapore as well. We are all over the world right now. But for this next rider, we are over to Wales for Jordan Godwin. This is Godwin trying to up the ante. He was in our finals last year. He got fourth place, so just outside of that podium. Godwin has been on a tear for the last year. I feel like his riding is just at the forefront of progression of street. Let's watch his foot placement. He's got his left foot forward. Great way to start it out. Crank arm down, ice pick. 
but he'll actually switch his feet up a lot and go switch stance, opening up some wild moves for crank arm slides on both sides of his bike. And there you go, dodging traffic, getting around that upright pillar. He had to just pull his weight backwards so that he didn't hit his front wheel when he got that spin off the rail. Yeah, hitting the wrong side of the rail. We haven't seen anyone else doing that. The judges are going to be noting that down. Jordan riding for We The People, Eclaw, Monster, Etnies, Crucial BMX, and Doomed. That's his own clothing brand, 540, putting it in reverse. Very clean exit there, and he got that slide, and there you go, the foot position. You saw his right foot was forward, so he could actually slide on the crank arm, and Jordan is on fire, James. Yeah, 10 seconds left on the clock. What's he got to round this one out? Because this could be a really nicely scoring run for his first out yes. here. Yeah, taking that to Fakey. And I think we're going to see Jordan Godwin shoot right up that leaderboard. A really nice place to start, which leaves him with so many options for run number two now. Street riders around the world check in. I see Marcus Hoyt back in NYC along with Andrew at Mesrol Shop getting pumped on these street combos. Again, left foot forward, crank arm down, ice picks on the back peg. He's got that super steezy downside tail whip on the hip. But right here, watch his front wheel. I always did just pull it back and narrowly avoid bonking the upright. That 540 was clean, 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 going backwards right here. And he just linked in so many tricks. There's the right foot forward, got the 180, and then just kept it dialed. That yeah. was Jordan Godwin, dialed. That's there's no really other way to describe it. Brandon McCona saying, damn son, Jordan on fire with loads of flame emojis. And we're gonna see how he feels about that. He's down with Thule. Okay. <laughs> Jordan, you are absolutely on fire. I'm going to give you a second to kind of have a breath. <laughs> but really, that was such an amazing run. And you had a good year in general. Freak just came out. Yeah. You just won Nora, Rider of the Year Nora Cup. I mean, what else? Are you going to be Godwin, good win, <laughs> winning two possession as well? Uh, I don't know about the win here, but I'll try my best. Obviously, Freak came out and the Nora. It's been an unbelievable year, and I'm just blown away to be honest I don't even know what to say about this year <laughs> so how do you think you scored I think you're gonna see your score in a second I have no idea and you ranked first Woo! Hey. <laughs> well done Jordan looking forward to your second run thank you very much amazing job cheers Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Julie. Well, there we go. We were hyped on Stu Chisholm's run. He's on an 81.66, but Jordan Godwin going almost five whole points clear, an 86.33. And we move to a guy right now that I know lots of you have been hyped to see, Courage Adams. Courage Adams is such a progressive street rider. For years at Simple Session, his focus is always putting together these impossibly mind-bending combinations where he has a manual on the front or back wheel. Sometimes they'd be 20 second combos and links, which is really risky, because if you don't pull it, you're gonna be negatively penalized. If you do, well, the points will come in. We saw last year, Courage switched up his format a little bit and didn't focus as much on those combos. Let's see what he decides today in the finals. Yeah, kicking things off for the first of his two one-minute runs. Heading up onto what you were calling the battleship and just going over the bars. A little too much weight on the front. Still 45 seconds on the clock, though. Like we've said, I don't really think the judges penalize the fools too hard, but it's more that when you are essentially wasting the time with those fools, you aren't getting those points in. So an awkward place to fall to kick things off, but Courage seeming to get back into the flow of things. And Courage has been on the podium for so many years, wanting to get on top. In 22, he actually finished in third place. Back in 21, he was in second place. And then in 2020, he was just outside of the podium in fifth place. So I know Courage would want to be in that top spot. Bar spin on, bar spin off, maybe looking for an ice pick grind, kicking a tail whip. And Courage looking up at the clock, knowing he might have time for a final thought. And that is going to be it for Courage Adams' first run of two. Waving to the crowd. Lots of Courage fans out here today. As there are in the chat, we see you popping off. Thank you very much for getting involved. Like I say, hashtag simple session. If you want to get 
in the in the uh, mix. So this was kind of unconventional away for Courage Adams having a mistake on that nose manual. I mean, his riding was great. That 180 double bar spin, I never want to take away. And actually, if anything, I'll just highlight how consistent he has been over the last several years here at Simple Session. So a lot of people, even in the chat, are surprised and blown away that, hey, on a nose manual, he messed up because he has some of the best in the game. So let's put our collective energy out there for Courage for his second run. Yeah, 100%. Judges there figuring out where Courage is going to slot into the scores so far. Really cool to see riders globally checking in. Empire BMX, Tom and Tina. We got Adam Roy with Burn Slow. Got all the 9th Street locals checking in. My man Santi is watching back in Austin as well. We also have Santana, the legend of 9th Street, who sets the good tone and the good mood. So Santana seeing that 79.16 coming in for Courage. So pretty good score considering the amount of kind of room and margin he could go up. He had that big mistake on the nose manual, but not bad. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a, it's a strong foundation to build on, right? But we have six more riders to take their first runs, and we are only progressing up the leaderboard in terms of qualification from yesterday. So maybe the best is yet to come. Matt Ray from Boston is going to come in next, play second at Simple Session in 2019, and hoping he can get on the podium again today. I'm getting some messages coming in from Florida. Ron Bonner, Ryan Scher, the owners of Sabrosa, and the Shadow Conspiracy, two of his main sponsors, cheering on Matt Ray. They know what a powerhouse he is. If you haven't seen his edit, The Boston Masker, check it out on YouTube. It's such a great showcase of modern day street riding. But he is going to start up on top of the sub box right now. Let's see what he's going to do. The radio bike code 270 bar spin in, paying some homage to five. Oh, man. That is frustrating. He had that red carpet entrance, but maybe he'll get back on the bike. He's got the time, and I know he has the support here of our Estonian fans, but as I was saying, he was paying some homage to five-time Simple Session champion Drew Bazanzin. I know you're watching on the feed right now. Drew is one of the most celebrated riders out here, and he'd always start his run with a dramatic red carpet entrance. And we get everybody just so hyped up, and we saw that with Matt Ray. Unfortunately, though, going down on that battleship, and you can just see the energy is pulled out of his run a little bit. Yeah, you mentioned Drew there. I mean, and the fact that I'm a skateboarder as well. I know from being a skateboarder at Simple Session, when Drew was riding, all the skaters wanted to hang around to see what he was going to do. Yeah, Drew, we love you. We know you're checking in on the feed. Not only in the booth, not only the riders, everyone in Tallinn, Estonia. You are royalty worldwide. Drew Bazanzin is the man, five-time Simple Session champion more wins than anyone else in this most competitive contest for BMX, where really we just see the progression. More than it being like, hey, a competition where you're not supportive, it's more like, hey, we've seen the sport progress. So there you go, that 270 drop in with the bar spin, that is blind right there. It's hard to see that landing, but Matt Ray utilizing his power, you can see that 180 at the double peg from the rail. I mean, he is such a strong rider, he just gets he height on that 180. I mean, in some ways, you bet you could clear that driveway if he really went for it. But suicide, no hander, pinching the seat, supporting the front end of the bike up over that rail and finding the landing. Yeah, unfortunate start for Matt, but managing to get back into the flow and get some things down. He will definitely want to step that up for run number two, though. And yeah, we'll have to see how he handles that pressure. He's going to have to take a deep breath get his head back in the game. I love seeing all the support for Drew Bazanzin in the chat. If you haven't had a chance to re-up and watch any of Drew Bazanzin's edits lately, just type in his name. You'll see every few millions of views on YouTube. Bazanzin's the man. But right there, 73.66, Matt Ray's first attempt in the ring. So you see him shaking his head. He's gonna have a lot of room to work, but very impressive of what he got done. Yeah, now we talk about Simple Session also being kind of about the parties. And the man that is the walking party is Reed Stark. Yeah, Reed Stark doing double duty this weekend because he actually was DJing last night, 12 to 1.30 a.m. slot on the dance floor at the club. 
getting everyone hyped up, and now he's going to get the crowd pumped here in Estonia. He has not won this event before, but he has been close. He favors high speed lines and looking for a unique, just kind of pockets on a course that no one else finds. Sometimes some big gaps to grinds, and I have a feeling this is really going to favor him in the final. He's doing it for BSD, Sweets Kandamas, Etnies, Roar Superfoods, Plant Basically, and Parachute Papers. Look at that. Talk about unique. First rider, we saw a grind on the side and then a gap to a Smith grind over double peg. But look how he has his momentum as he even just checks in with the dark side of that ice pick on the sub. And then James able to cruise for that ice pick. Yeah, we were talking earlier about kind of having to try and pick your obstacles, but Reed managing to really just hit everything as he goes back and forth across the park and the attention to detail bonking his wheel on the upright onto that sub pressing the front wheel this is a great run if Stark can oh no come on Reed get back on it we want to see you do it because I have a feeling that was a big run that might have shaken up that leaderboard but he still has time and we talked about it talking with Bart DeJong one of the head judges he said riders aren't going to be totally penalized if you mess up and other than that crash Reed is looking flawless out there. Toothpick on the pillar, coming back down at the buzzer. Yeah, Trust Kill saying Bro is in full speed mode, and Harry saying Reed going a million mile an hour. Yeah, it's so hard to have that pace. Take a look as he goes to the top of the Visit Estonia wall ride. That was out of a feeble grind. This is a gap to a Smith. That's when your peg is on the ledge, your back wheel is up. Here's a feeble version. And he went the distance, jumping into the transition to keep his speed. But the crazy thing is he's then able to hop over the rail and ice pick. He just packed in so many difficult technical tricks that on their own would be hard. But the fact that this Nate Wessel design course is such a tight footprint. He just went back to back to back to back, which was unbelievable. On the planet. But yeah, now Reed Stark to you, Tuli, getting it done. And he's down Reed with Tuli at the move. side of the park right now. <laughs> Reed, you are an absolute crowd favorite. Every year you come back to Simple Session and you're just flying around the course. I mean, you messed it up in the end a little bit, but you still have a second run and it was an absolute joy watching you. Do you want to walk us through your run? Uh, yeah, I did a pretty similar thing to yesterday. I crashed and somehow still got all the tricks I wanted to get done, which was sick. Must be going faster, but I don't know, we got a second run, ramp it up a little bit. I feel good about it though. Kind of smoked my heel, but we're all right. I mean, on top of writing, you're also DJing in a simple session. So you have a double job, a night job and a day job. How's that going? It's great. It's super fun being out there. Like Estonians are so sick and being around all my friends and playing fun music for them. But yeah, it's a lot. Like, get back from, from the contest, go to the hotel, lay down for two minutes, get food straight to the club, and then you're up. So, uh, that's a lot. I'm not going to torture you this year with the uh, Kendama trick. Maybe you're going to do that in the evening. But what kind of music are you playing in the evening? What can people expect? Uh, I'll probably play a bit of like UK Garage, some, some bass house, uh, some deep dub, maybe some deep reggae stuff, some grime. I don't know. I like, I like switching it up, doing all sorts of stuff, getting creative. Okay, well fun. And uh, yeah, good luck to you in the second run. Thank you so you much. <laughs> thank you, Julie. Thank you, Reed. Reed Stark awesome getting into sixth place with a 76 there. And, and going to see what he can pull in his second run. But right now, we are dipping to Germany for Killian Roth. Killian's second simple session. He did not make finals. He got 20th last year. But if this is your first time witnessing Killian Roth riding, it is definitely a sight to behold because he is on the forefront as far as technical rail tricks. He's got this really laid back style. So it almost in a way you don't realize how difficult and just how risky the moves he's doing, but it's really grace under pressure. Last week in Hastings, England, there was a battle of Hastings contest and he had one of the hardest moves on the handrail comp. And let's see if he sticks with the rail. Double tire, dropping that front peg down to a toothpick, doing that grind you saw on his pedal and his back peg, traveling in that forward direction, coming back at us. Come on, Killian. Oh, double tire, 180 bar spin, boom. That's what I'm talking about. And the fact that he had to transfer over to the tire ride makes it so much harder because you're not getting on it necessarily perfect straight and your tire's around, the rail's round. 
Double tire, drop it into a grind. Now, James, I want to talk about that for a second. This is BMX freestyle. Riders can set their bikes up any way they want, pegs or no pegs. But sometimes street riders that do a lot of rail rides will run the four pegs because in an instant like that, when you slip off the rail, you can drop down into a feeble or a double peg grind. Up. Big kink manual right there. That was a huge move at the buzzer for Killian Roth. A big first score on his first round of predict. A, a solid, solid run. Last year, like you say, 20th, man. Qualifying in fourth this year. What a showing for Killian. Now take note again at just his entry and exit of these rails. Boom, getting that lucky grind going forward with the 180. Shout out to John Lucky Engelbert in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We're seeing his legend just continue out here. Double tire ride and then that 180 bar spin pop off. Very smooth on that exit. And Killian at the end. Yes, Van Homan is in the building. The rider who helped put the rail manual on the map. And right here, Killian saying, hey, Van, take a look at this kink rail manual going through the kink and all the way down with his back wheel departing cleanly off the end of the rail. Uh, Rich saying big shout out to Darrow and James. Great work, guys, in the chat. Thank you very much, Rich. If you're in the chat, we will get to shouting you out very soon. Let us know where you're watching today. And Killian is down with Thule at the side of the park right now. Killian, it's your second time at Simple Session. How's it going for you? I mean, I didn't thought I would end up in uh, finals, so I'm super happy. I'm super happy. It's also been a good year for you because you've also on the road with Jordan and Felix Brangenberg, Wilming for Freak, and you're also in Hastings. What else is happening at the end of the year? Uh, there's one more trip upcoming, but in a few weeks. And then we'll see what's, what's next. So how does it feel to compete with your friends that you've been filming with them all year round, you've been traveling with them, now you're always in competitions together? How does it differ for you? It's good to see everyone. That's the main part of it. See everyone, hang out, have a good time. That's all what's about, huh? Well, perfect. Have a great time in the second round as well. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you to BMX and Thank back you, liking that one, saying let's go in the chat. And Scott Lindsay saying simple session is awesome. Simply put, you're not wrong, man. You are not wrong. So the judges have that difficult job. It doesn't matter if it's the first run or the last run. It comes down to the best run. That format is really interesting and can be stressful for the riders because we've seen this before. The podium can change at any moment. The last rider. We talk about this. Oh, Killian Roth with an 80.50. So he's going to move into that third position. Jordan Godwin holding strong with an 86.33. And then in second will still be Stuart Chisholm with an 81.66. Okay. Let's head now to our third place qualifier. A real fan favorite. British rail slayer and party goer, Joe Jarvis. Yeah, Joe Jarvis also riding for Federal Substance BMX and 70s Distro. The UK rider gets the full pull out here, but I do have to say we saw a maybe more focused Joe Jarvis in qualifying. He was dialed. He had full runs and full pulls. X up grind, smooth, grabs that transition, going on the front wheel, yes. So right now Jarvis, you saw that he adjusted his speed, fishtailing his back end, because riders don't have brakes on their bikes, and they want to be at that right cadence for the trick they're going to throw. Jarvis, you see reverse pumping in that pit, back at us with the X up grind to 180. James, this is a very in control Joe Jarvis. Do you know what, that's what I said to him last night as well, because uh, like I say, I saw him in the hotel when he said about Stu Chisholm. Oh, ah. you no! Know, just coming unstuck on the way back in. But I said to him, I was like, dude, you just look in the zone. And he said, oh, I didn't feel it. But I was like, nah, you really look like you're in control, man. And uh, he said last night, he was like, maybe I need to take this a little bit more seriously. I'm going to party a little bit less tonight. I don't know what Joe Jarvis partying less looks like, <laughs> but apparently that was what was going down. He was going to going to attack this with a little bit more a little bit more uh, attitude today. Big 360 right there. You see him throwing the bike. Happy with his run, minus that one little mess up. He looked great and composed out there. You can see the Joe Jarvis fans in the front row hyped. And that's the great thing about Simple Session. Come join us. Even though you see there's fans in the stands, you get to hang with the riders. 
You get to hang out at the parties. You get to be at the street gyms. You get a chance to just chill, make friends, and be a part of it. There really isn't this barrier wall that you might expect in some other contests, and that's what's great, and the riders know they have such a good experience. Look at that X up grind, twisting the arms around, 180, smooth on that spin. And now here we go, double peg down, going up on that back peg. That's the ice pick grind. And here we have a look at Jarvis going up, gap to double peg, and gets that full 360, puts his weight forward to make sure that that back end can get the rotation and then touching down. Yeah, we'll see how Joe feels about his first run because he's down with Tooley at the side of the park. <laughs> Joe Jarvis, I mean, you're an absolute crowd pleaser, and I think you're the destination, definition of work hard, play harder. What is your take on it? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I kind of feed off everyone's energy. So when they're smiling, I'm smiling. I'm making them smile, and they're making me smile, and you know, so yeah. Thank you all, every single one of you. So what is your plan for tonight? Um, I've got one more minute left on the course. 20 beers from the store, straight to Club Hollywood. Well, perfect, and good luck to you in the Thank second you. one. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Well, you know exactly where to meet Joe Jarvis. A guy tonight. that he always brings the good vibes, the good energy, Joe Jarvis. Oh, man, he just really embodies what Simple Session's all about, right, Daryl? Yeah, I mean, that energy on and off the course is definitely respected and appreciated out here. Jarvis, though, we talk about it being best run counts. He had a smooth run. He did have that pretty big mess up falling off the bike. So I say that in a way where he's going to have another opportunity to potentially up this score, which is a 78.75. He's going to be sitting in sixth, which is a good score. You see those moves right there. I'm liking what he's putting down, but he's going to have an opportunity to up the ante and run two. Yeah, currently in sixth place, slotting between Courage Adams and Bruno Hoffman. Our second place qualifier about to take to the park, though, coming from Cape Town, South Africa, Murray Lauser. Riding for Red Bull, Vans, Odyssey BMX, and Fly Bikes, which I'm super hyped that the South African rider rode so good in our qualifying, came in second place because when we first arrived here, I asked riders who is looking good in practice. They all said, Maury is dialed. And look at that, starting things off very technical. Balancing on that front wheel, getting the pivot around, and then a transfer to a grind that no other rider has done. You see him utilizing the upright and then the downright of the rail. That's kind of a newer style in BMX Street. And we're seeing Maury just pushing it forward, consistent as he has 38 seconds to work with. Yeah, coming through for the ledge. Oh, going up to Smith, stepping off, popping over, oh, double peg, and then over to double peg on the other side. Really consistent on that front end and back end. Quick double tie ride. You see a lot of riders, again, doing that fishtail, adjusting their speed. And look at that, checking in with the side of our ramp and then hopping over right there. Again, just want to illustrate and hit home if there's something that you and I can't see from our vantage point, the judges see it all. Crooked grind across, and he has time for a final thought. The flare at the buzzer. Going up on that front wheel and tossing the bars for some extra points. Now, James, I'm going to highlight this because I was at the riders meeting right before the contest, and the three judges were saying, listen, the buzzer, if you're on your way to doing a trick, we're going to count it. If you're way, way, way away, it's not going to count. But this is simple session. We want to give you the breathing room. We want to have the opportunity for push your ride and forward. And most likely that nose manual at the bar is going to count. But look at that tweaked out 270, getting that look back, cranking it. Double peg grind, going the distance as he hops over, utilizing both sides of the bike, gets the 180 clean, coming down. Checking in on that side of the wall ride, two tires planting on the face. There was that fishtail, and then right here, prior to the buzzer, the flare that's the backflip showing you, hey, I got some style, and I can throw down on a quarter. Yeah, Thule is down with Murray as well. Let's see what he thinks of his first run. Murray is such a great job. I mean, I was hearing the host talking that you have such a unique riding style. What is your own take on it, and how was, what is your take on your first run? 
Uh, I guess I came from a really small town. You know, like skate parks and stuff like that. So yeah, I just kind of rode the town, saw different things. And I guess just because I came from a skate park, there wasn't like, yeah, there just wasn't stuff to ride. <laughs> And a fun fact about you, on top of being an absolute top athlete, you're also an artist. Yeah, I love painting. Um, it's kind of like when I'm not riding, I'll go home, paint a bit, or when I'm injured, like downtime. But yeah, love painting. It, it kind of influences my riding too. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely, that's wonderful. Let's wait for your score. I think it's going to appear any second now. What do you think? Oh, second! Rank second! Great job, Murray. And good luck to you on your second one. Yeah. 84.33. Jason in the chat saying this guy is fire. The judges thinking so as well. Second place for Murray with an 84.33. But we move now to our first place qualifier and defending champion, Boyd Hilda. Can he go for back-to-back -back wins at Simple Session today? What do you think, Daryl? Well, if any rider is poised to do so, it would be Boyd Hilder because he qualified first, meaning of all of our 54 competitors, he was favored the most in the judges' eyes, and his riding was embraced with that high score. But right now, he is going to drop in Federal Bikes, Monster Odyssey, Vans, Lux, and X1 Helmets. Here we go. Hilder, the Australian, pressing onto that wall. No front brakes. He finds that sweet spot. And now he's going up and over the rail, boosting with that fast plant. Bar spin transfer. I love the way that he caught the bars and then cut the corner to get to that barrel roll. That's called finding your line. And you see him pumping down that vert wall, accelerating in speed and kicking the downside tail whip. Wow, 30 seconds. What? He's only halfway through his run at this point. Boyd Hilder is absolutely on one out here at Simple Session, taking the 360 out of that feeble as well. Bar spin and that tail whip out on that concave radio bike. Sub box going for the wall ride. Yes. Oh my word. That must have been about 10 foot above the above the transition below. And it's a big old gap to pull in from as well. He's still got 10 seconds on the clock as well. Smith grind to a bar spin, looking up at the crowd saying, what up now, Estonia? Wrapping it up with that tail whip. Boyd Hilder, your defending 2022 Simple Session champion, lighting this park on fire. Just absolutely attacks that park. And the riders, I mean, like I say, we're kind of up here in the studio. We can hear how crazy everyone is going off down there. G Lock saying easy 90 plus score that. I got to agree. This is going to be a big score getting that 360 foot plant. So much happened in Boyd Hilder's run. The bar spin wall ride tail whip on the Radio Bike Co. sub wall face. That's a concave wall. That's not a flat face. So you got to get in that pocket. You have coping on top and bottom. I love the way that he was able to get that barrel roll. But the important part was the way he cut the angle to get there, kicking his federal bike around for that downside tail whip to pedals. Here he pinned the throttle, went up that Pringles tube, and then hit the wall above, and it's so narrow getting in past that sub box, not clipping your wheels. And he was looking at it in practice, and I was talking to him, he didn't know if he was gonna do it. He said, it's so tight, I don't think I could get back in. Yeah. Well, he did it. Yeah. That sub box is set back only about a foot from the lip of the ramp, and uh, he's got me pretty buzzing. After that, he's down with Thule. Defending champion, I mean, you did not disappoint. That was just absolutely nuts. Thank you. No, I'm just stoked to do everything I went out to do. And honestly, I'm gassed right now, so I don't know how I can still talk, but thank you to the crowd. They're going off. Gets me stoked. We're going to give a score in a second. How do you think you scored? Uh, give me whatever. Let's just go. Well, you're the first. <laughs> Congrats, Boyd. Great job. Thank you. And yeah, excited for your second run. Absolutely fabulous job. Thank you very much.
Boyd Hilda taking that first place spot. The only rider to get into the 90s, Johan Fauche in the chat saying he doesn't even need a second run at this point. What do you think, Daryl? Do you agree? Is there any way you can step that up? Well, I don't know if it's possible because we see he's the only rider in the 90s, that 90.33. Jordan Godwin sitting in second with an 86.33 and Maury Lobster with an 84.33. Now, we talk about it being a best run count format and it can come down to the wire. So since he qualified first, he's gonna have an opportunity when we go through our second runs to be able to adjust that risk reward if need be. Because now we've seen what the riders all have, what they're doing, and they're gonna be able to decide, hey, how much risk reward, what do I have in the tank? What can I pull out? What can I do for run number two? Yeah, well, we've seen the first runs. We're gonna take a quick break, a good chance for you guys to grab some snacks, grab some drinks, because runs two are gonna go off. We will catch you very shortly at Simple Session 2023. institutions putting some serious money on the table to make a simple session 23 possible big massive high 10 and shout out to red bull lhv kia sportland vans converse pringles balchia snowman ballsy radio bikes fuse protection canyon bikes kunstform Ampler Electric Bicycles, Metza Wood, King Fabric, Versa, and VLND Burgers, Zadoline, and Lux Express. A very, very special shout out to Visit Estonia, the Ministry of Culture, and the City of Tallinn for hosting us here in the beautiful town of Tallinn, Estonia. And also a big high five to our media partners, Delphi, JC Deco, HTV, Waterbear, X Games, Fuel TV, Unreal, and DigBMX.com. contest the last competition of uh, today and of the 2023 simple session at the Poyana factory the journey in the year 24 will return to the birthplace of simple session to the wonderful city of Tartu Estonia and that a uh, big magical number 25 is already knocking on that door loud and clear and I hope we will, will celebrate that 25th year 
in the hometown, I like to call it the hometown of Simple Session, Tallinn, Estonia. A very, a very impressive record, if you want to call it a record, because Simple Session is just done with a lot of die-hard passion. 23 years in a row, unbroken, a Simple Session every year, skateboarding, and a BMX action delivered here to the wonderful people in Estonia. left a little less than one and a half minutes left to warm up and then I'm gonna ask all the riders to please clear the course again for all second runs and Parker Heath last and second <laughs> Welcome back to Simple Session 2023. We are almost about to get underway with the second runs for our top 15 qualifiers through to the BMX finals. Oh man, I'm fired up after Boyd Hilda's first run. Yeah, we witnessed 15. Oh, look at that. Shout out to the Pomeranian in the crowd. It's going to get a little soft spot in my heart right there. I love seeing dogs, especially cheering on our riders. But yeah, the first run of riding was pretty un unbelievable and very impressive. Let's take a look at some of the many highlights from our first riders in heat. Number one, going for run one of two. All right, we got Mari Lobster right there, twisting and tweaking that 270 look back. I loved the bike control right there double peg hopping over grinding both sides then getting that clean 180 just uh, getting a double tire check in on that sub and right here that flare the backflip 180 at the buzzer a lot of times riders say hey why do they throw a flare in at the end it just shows hey i've got some control i can do a big trick and get it done in time jordan godwin sitting in that number two spot technical very different riding than Boyd Hilder, as you can see, he just does a lot of focuses on his grind. Again, he has that switch crank where he can grind on either side, utilizing the crank arm. That's exactly what I'm talking about. His pedals are switched directions. And right now, our number one leader, our defending champion, Boyd Hilder, a very different style than Maury and also Jordan Godwin. He had technical tricks like that nose press right here. He threaded the needle with that bar spin, double tire on the Radio Bike Co. sub box wall, and then had the tail whip in. Look at the boost coming up and then had to just nose dive it into the transition and then he had the barrel roll after he had to weave traffic on the flat ground but right here in the downside tail whip as he just grabs that transition but it was all about pinning back the throttle going up our pringle stack and then getting this wall ride into the quarter pipe now the thing that's so hard about that the angles you have to cut you don't have a lot of margin to clear that protruding sub box and boy did it perfectly yeah I've stood up there, man, and it is it is tight. Like, you are squeezing your way around that sub box. So, like you say, pulling in from the wall, I mean, it's so easy to go to flat from there if that's what you're trying to do. It's a long old way to go, but to get straight back into that transition is so precise. So, Boyd Hilda, I mean, can he even top that? We'll have to wait and find out. Parker Heath coming back in for the first of our second runs, taking that X up, double peg stall up on the sub box to kick things off. So, the GT rider, as we talked about, he is also a model when he's off his bike, but right now he is modeling his second run with the big no-hander over the driveway and the rail. Parker is a very well-rounded rider, but I like to think of him as maybe a little bit more of a transition rider, only because he's got the speed, and he's showing that right there with the big gap to X-up grind. 
Shout out to the East Coast ECD legend, Joe Kowalski, AKA the Butcher, first rider to start really doing exit grinds. And we are seeing that homage being played here with some progression from Parker Heath. Yeah, Parker Heath seeming to be a real master of those exit grinds. Absolutely loves him, one-handed as well. Yes, then going for that 540, leg dangling off the back. But come on, Parker, you got time for an exclamation point. Tail whip to pedals. Just yeah. a few seconds left on the clock. And like you say, yeah, he's kind of far away from that. You were saying there's kind of that margin that the judges will decide on as to whether that counts. But that's the really cool thing, right, about Simple Session being an unsanctioned event, right? It, we're not adhering to loads of rules here. It's all about the vibes, all about the good times. And if you are on your way, if you're close to taking off for a trick, do you know what? Forget the buzzer. Let's just get it done. And uh, yeah, if you're close enough, the judges are probably going to count it because we just want to see great riding, right? That's what Simple Session's all about. It's all about progression and good times. Yeah, it creates the platform for riders to really focus. So there's not as many core BMX events as you'd think out there with park or street riding or here ATV style. And it gives riders a platform to bring it all together. Yeah, Parker, after his second run, is down with Tooley. Let's see what he thought. And back to you, Tooley. Parker, you absolutely improved your second run compared to the first one. What went through your head after your first run and like prepping for the second one? Well, it really took me, took the wind out of my sails on the first one missing my feet on something simple like a tail whip. So in the beginning I was like, I don't even want to keep going, but I made sure the second round I put my feet on the pedals and kept it going and now did the whole run and now I'm out of breath, but I'm having a good time and I'm happy that I put something together. Thank you so much. You're out of breath. I'm not going to torture you more. <laughs> Great job and Thank you. hope you come back next year. Yeah, woo, thanks. Cool. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Parker. Thank you very much, Tuli, for these insights. There we go, Parker. Feeling much better about that second run. Of course, we kind of knew he was going to need to come and step it up. Had a bit of pressure on him, but managed to get the full pull in run number two. Yeah, and if you are just joining us, these are our three judges. Bart de Jong from the Netherlands. In the middle is Marcus Bilke from Germany. And on the four end of your screen, that is Tom Sillens from Latvia. So an improvement right there. 74 even for run number two. You see that head nod of approval and that smile right there for Parker Heath. Yeah, moves up to 12th place. So we head now to Michael Dixon qualified in 14th and came out swinging with a good good first run wasn't a full pull though so we're going to see if that's what he can do this time around ah oh, commentators curse but he's straight back in he's managed to keep that flow going he hasn't really lost any time on that yeah, and you just heard from Parker Heath, the big thing is about keeping your head mentally in the game. You want to make sure that you can stay focused. He is also riding for GT bikes, so it's great when a rider has a teammate out there. Bar spin out of that crank arm slide. I know Ben Ward, who is the team captain at GT, knows how to pick his riders, along with Jeff Zielinski, who's one of their photographers and creatives. You actually heard Bethany Hendrick give a shout out to those two guys and it's great when you have teams like that that can just support and give riders a platform and right now Michael Dixon is working things out with that toboggan transfer tail whip around he's got 12 seconds to work with Lionel Barra saying nice smooth he's enjoying this run five seconds still on the clock for Michael Dixon and there we go coming up for the Smith bar spin out to finish things off Nice, that'll be an improvement for Michael on his first run, I'm sure. We'll have to see what the judges think. Mike in the comments saying, wouldn't want to judge this one, too difficult. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, it's such a difficult thing. How do you figure out where the riders? Well, sometimes you got to have not only the style and quality of tricks, like Dixon had that crank arm slide to bar spin, which was one of my highlights that I like to see in his run. But it's also the frequency. Here we go, the crank arm bar coming off. I love the way that you saw he just guided it around nice and smooth. There's that toboggan. Grab the seat, twist the bars. We're gonna think about that score of what it's gonna be. You can see having a post-run beer right there, holding it up. Saku, that's the local beer. We're usually in the Saku Arena for many years here in Estonia. And that is a well-deserved 
drink because you made the finals. You're going to get a little bit of an improvement with the 70.33, but Michael Dixon's going to hold strong in that 14th spot. Yeah, 70.33 for Michael. And we're going to move to Santiago La Verde. Now, it's worth mentioning as well, of course, because Boyd Hilda qualified first place, he has the advantage right now of watching all of the other riders go before he has to take his second run. And is it just going to be a victory lap? Or is there a rider out here that can top that 90.33 he's sat on. Santi is going to give it a go. Originally from Medellin, Colombia, riding for Kink BMX, the cut, Odyssey, and Vance, now living out in Barcelona, charging in. Yo, there we go, put it in reverse. Talk about switching things up. I loved that 270 tabletop landing in the Smith and then said, let me just flip it, reverse, coming back in, clean 180 out. So it's hard to do that in your mid run when you wind up going fakey, you kind of can flip your energy around and it definitely can play on that risk reward because if your energy gets zonked, it's hard to bring it. But there was a bar spin and then he flipped that in reverse with the full bars back, James. Yeah, currently sat on an 80 in sixth place. 15 seconds on the clock. Gonna see what you can pull in these remaining moments. And thank you to the amazing Simple Session team. They've just delivered Daryl a coffee and on the side of the cup, it says Daryl rocks. Well, they're definitely making me blush up here. You heard the thing, you never deny a good rumor. So I'm gonna say thank you. Everyone is definitely too kind. But right there, Santiago, one of my faves out here. He actually won our street jam in 2022, doing a wild crank arm slide up to 180. He's always known for his crank arm grind, but he actually didn't even throw too many of them in here. And I say that because even last year, we had a long flat rail and he didn't he was the only rider to crank arm across it, so just such well-rounded. I love that 270 landing. Smith going back down. We got our mural out there by Gutface. I had a chance to talk with him yesterday, independent artist, and it was such a big deal for him to paint this mural for millions around the world to see that it was a really cool thing that the platform is also for the creative side. So if you want to get a mural or commissioned artwork, give him a follow. Gutface did that mural. Pretty cool to have that being ridden by Santiago Leverde. Yeah, insane BMX Thomas in the chat saying that was a beautiful bar bar back. No, you were loving that one as we were calling it as well. Yeah, that bar was full 360. I'm going to say it was 361 degrees. <laughs> it was fully committed forward and then he pulled it back. So sometimes riders will kind of throw it 270 and 270. But right now we got a rider who definitely knows how to throw them, whether they're fists, jabs, crosses, elbows or kicks. We're talking about the martial artist himself, the well rounded rider doing it for fiend odyssey van sweets kandama coming all the way from kenwick this is johnny rakis x up yeah all right there we go some creativity hitting a quick smith stall up on the side of that pringles right there i'm going to give a shout out to the late great paul buchanan one of the first riders to ever kind of explore that smith fakie 180 out Going for the grind. Come on, Johnny. Let's see what he's going to do. A lot of focus and determination. He's been having a great year. He rode at X Games earlier in the year. That's always a big thing and benchmark for any rider to do. The chance to meet his parents out there. Very cool to see that support. Throwing that bar spin to tooth hanger. Oh, come then on, Johnny. Coming undone, heading back up the rail. Still 10 seconds on the clock. Are we going to see him? Wave this off. He's looking like he might have something in mind. Oh, oh getting it done. That was a nasty combo, and I mean that in the best way possible. I know everyone at Odyssey, Nuno, Jim Bauer, down in Austin, Texas, in the office. Is psyched on Johnny's riding. He's a new addition to the team. Odyssey makes some of the best components out there for BMX. And right now we're seeing the bar spin, X up grind. Jumping off, catching the transition backwards with the 180 bar. Smith right into the transition again. So it's hard to do that and to be able to just catch those little pockets. You see the difference. If you don't do that, your speed gets zonked and you can't necessarily carry your momentum. But right here, bar spin. Boom! And that was one of the bigger moves of his run because you got to be precise. And here was the cherry on top. 
grinding both directions, tick tacking up on top, getting the 180, spinning out nice and smooth. Douglas Silva sending us loads of flame emojis for that one. If you want to get involved, hashtag simple session. And Johnny Rikus is down with Tuli at the side of the park right now. Johnny, you missed practice, but you qualified. How was that for you? It was pretty hectic. I was kind of just winging it the whole time. I was improving the whole time. I don't know, trying to find my way through the course. Had some fun and ended up here somehow. This is your second time at Simple Session. The first time was 2019, but that was in winter. So how is Estonian summer for you? It's been great. I've never seen the concrete in Estonia. <laughs> it's beautiful to see. I got to cruise the city for the first time. Having a great time so far. I'm excited to see more. So what is a Simple Session vibe in your opinion? So one giant party. Big session with your friends. Reason to all get together and hang out. It's beautiful. Let's keep doing it. Fabulous answer. Thank you so much. Hope you come back next year. Shouts to Jamscons92. What a name in the chat saying bar hanger shouldn't be that chill. He did make that look sweet. 77 for Johnny Rakis. Puts himself into 10th place right now. And we head to Bruno Hoffman, a 78.66 for his first run, sat in ninth, and wanted to see if he can up that right now. As we mentioned, Bruno grew up in the BMX media and the magazines, Dig Mag. He was always a favorite, plastered in the pages because he helped usher in the new era of street riding. No stranger at all to Simple Session. Yes, getting that lucky grind going forward. That's his pedal on the ledge, his back peg on. Now going backwards, very smooth with that 180 on, 180 off. Again, riders want to find these little pockets and transitions. This course is so tight and you can get lost out there very easily. And what I mean by being lost, Yes, getting that smooth 180 onto the deck. If you're not aware and you can't pull your tricks right away, you can't get set up. And Bruno trying to get that 450 fakie over that hip. Just 15 seconds left on the clock for Bruno. Yeah, you hear right now our infield MC Andy Zeiss cheering up Bruno Hoffman. Let's see, stalling on the fence, getting it around two for two. Getting up close and personal with our fans. Yeah, the kids on the other side in the replay, you could see it looked like uh, their life flashed before their eyes on the first round. Hopefully <laughs> a little more ready for it this time around. Got the phones out on 0 0.5, ready to, uh, to get that good angle. Yeah, ice pick taking that over to the other side of the rail. Great perspective right there. You see the 180 on, 180 off, and he was able to just pump in the transition. Now, I love this. Wall ride, land and fake, but watch, he just rides it out and then right onto the main stage with that 180. And then Hoffman was able to keep the momentum, and here we go. Boom, there's that wide angle you're talking about. Tag, simple session. We want to see that, so hashtags. All right, there They're we go. They're already on it. They're doing it. They are dialed, and we'll take that opportunity. I know if you're watching around the world, pull out your smartphone. Give us a follow on Instagram, at Simple Session. Stay up to date with all the behind-the-scenes action from all of our riders. So it looks like Bruno's best bet is going to be his first run right there. His second score is going to be the one that throws away. But very impressive riding from the German. Yeah, so we're going to see what happens. Bruno currently sat in ninth place. Stuart Chisholm up next, though, coming out of the UK. Second time in Tallinn, second time riding Simple Session, 12th place last year. Currently sat in fourth with an 81.66, and I know he'd be very happy if that's where he finishes at the end of the contest. But you can't rest on it, you can't rest on that run one score. No, you He's can't. Got to, got to step it up. But he does have the backing of riders here in Estonia and also back in Hastings, riding for Source BMX. Not only is he sponsored by them, but throughout the years he has also worked for the mail order known as Source, getting BMX components and products to riders. You can give them a shot, check them out, sourcebmx.com for all your goods and needs. And that's the cool thing about BMX, the sponsors help riders on their career and on their path. And we've seen Chisholm, this is his second time here at Simple. He's gonna try something here. The clock is ticking down, but he wants the energy and he knows this is the place to do it. So he's being cheered on right now by Tom Creasy, the Moore brothers, and going at it, putting the throttle down, bar spin. Oh. 
I have a feeling we might see a very technical combo right here. Hey, Chisholm, we're here for you. Take your time. You got the energy of everyone cheering on. I'm going to ask in the feed, you want to see Chisholm lace this together? Yeah, so it looked like in run one, he was looking for that bar up. Manny whipping. Yeah, almost getting it done. Daryl, how hard is that to throw a whip when you're in Manny off a drop like that? Well, if you got Joe Jarvis hitting your bottom and telling you you better do it again, so you're getting your mate cheering you on, it's very hard because he doesn't have brakes on his bike, so you got to find your balance in that sweet spot. We saw him do it with that ice pick grind to bar spin. you got to make sure you're locked into your manual where your front end is up, but not too locked in so you still can get that hop and kick the back end around. It's actually very difficult because sometimes you could get stuck in it and your weight could get pitched over the bars on the tail whip. So it's a hard trick to link together, especially when you just did a 60 second run. You're trying, the pressure's on, but let's all collectively put our thoughts and energy right now as the Source BMX rider Stu Chisholm drops in. Bar spin, manual. Yes! Yes, gets it done. Come on, Stu Chisholm. Okay, throwing away run number two just to get that trick done, but the crowd absolutely loving it. That one was purely for everyone watching. The chat is going off, and you see, I mean, I mean, it's basically a best trick performance at that point, isn't it? Stu getting it done, making his mark on Simple Session 2023. So many flame emojis coming into the chat. Lionel Barros saying crazy. Taco saying handled. John Doe, never give up. Man, everyone's loving this, Daryl. So there was an example on that over ice pick. He wasn't able to find that sweet spot in order to kick the tail whip like he did right there out of the double peg grind. Bar spin up, looking for the manual. You see, he locks in and right here at the back end, kicks around. And not only do we hear everyone go nuts here in Estonia, I know back in Hastings, Tom Creasy, Matt Brown, his whole family just going wild cheering on Stu Chisholm for a very big combo. So exciting. He's going to be absolutely amped from that. All the riders are too, and you can see on camera there, he's down with Thule, ready to chat about that one. <laughs> Stuart, I think you're one of the nicest athletes I've ever, ever met in my entire life, and you can really see this by the people cheering for you. Come on, give it up for Stuart. <laughs> the last trick you pulled together was such a hard trick to link together. I mean, you pulled it off. What was it? Yeah, I mean, if I messed my run up, that was for, do you know what, put on a show. So I'm out here, I've got to put on a show for you guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks to BSD, thanks to Fuse, thanks to Source. Thanks to every bloody people in this room. And Jarvis, because he's the sickest guy ever. Oh, Jarvis is a personal hype man, right? Thank you. Thanks for having me, such a pleasure. Till next time. Thank you so much, Stu. Oh Brap Tech in the chat, the loving that one as well. So much love for Stu Chisholm. And I mean, he talks about, oh, I messed up my second run. I thought I'd just go for it. He's sat in fourth right now. He's sitting in a really good spot. So do you know what? We had a great first run. Um, and then, yeah, a best trick thrown, basically, at the, uh, at the end for him there. So yeah, getting it done for the crowd, winning people over, making his mark on his second time out at Simple Session. But right now, we are going to move to the Australian, coming out of Melbourne, Jaxman Hins. Hins on course, 27 Federal Vans, BMX Mafia, dead leisure. Uh, having a little difficulty, but let's see. Bar spin, popping some height right there on that quarter pipe, charging back. Uh, looking for some kind of variation right there, potentially trying to pinch that seat. Double peg across, you see him getting some style out of the grind. Right now his head doesn't look fully in it, but let's see, maybe he could channel that energy for the second 30 seconds. I'm a huge Jackman fan. Yo, going up high on that quarter pipe. He's looking down on his bike. I wonder if maybe he has a flat tire a little bit low on air. Yeah, it looks like he's pointing to his back wheel. Ah, that's unfortunate right there. Well, sometimes that is the way it goes. You don't have your bike operating and it's not your day on course, but I do want to give a lot of props for Jackman making it into the final right there. 
at his second simple session. Let's take a look at some of the things that did go right. You saw that he had to adjust his cranks. He does tail whoops in a weird, funky, unique way where he then switches them, kicks the other way around. Hot hands right there, tossing those bars multiple times on the spin. Unfortunately, though, not able to toss them once on that transfer, getting up above that radio bike sub with the tuck. Yeah, so Jackman gonna stay in 15th, getting a 56.66, will take his first run score of a 64.33. Out here bringing the vibes and good times though. And the rider who's massively stepped up from yesterday is Jordan Godwin, qualified in eighth, currently sat in second place with an 86.33, needs though a 90.33 if he wants to take first. You can see our live standings right there on screen. You see four points he's gonna need. And as Thule mentioned, he just won Nora Cup Street Rider of the Year. That's our BMX number one rider award it's been going on for 27 years it's one of the most coveted awards in bmx because it's voted by your peers so right now he has definitely been on a tear jordan over smith and it looks like he might be chilling a little bit out there backwards with that 180 don't ever want to count him out but we know it's going to take something big 540 backwards, yes. Got that locked in. There Landing we go. that so precisely every time. Crank arm opposite direction. And his style right now is so laid back for the big hammers he's dropping. That 360 off could be a game changer right there. Very different style than Boyd Hilder, but extremely technical. Going forward, backwards, boom. Technical grind at the end. So we saw Jordan was so in the zone. I mean, he was so laid back. It was almost like, is he out there? And then you see the moves he's doing. It's a testament to how technical and advanced he is. So we're gonna see though, especially as we watch some of the highlights, the technical grinds. Regularly rides left foot forward. Look at this crank arm. Pops up into an ice pick. Had a little bit of difficulty keeping that front end up, but then here, one-handed X up transfer. I love the way he grabbed the seat, twisted that back end, and now he gets even closer to that pole. I thought maybe he was even gonna try to nose bonk that thing. Over Smith, and then Style kicking that back end out. Here's the 540, landing fakey, very clean. And right here, over. 360 coming out. That is such a hard trick to do. You see his free coaster actually engage when he goes forward once his beat and everything is back on the ground. Yeah, what do we think? Four points difference between Jordan and Boyd right now. It's a big ask. 90.33 that he needs and he gets an 87.5. So do you know what? He does increase his score, but it's not gonna be enough to take that top spot. And Jordan is going to stay in second for now. Yeah, and I'm just going to give a big shout out. The fact that he was so chill and calm and grace under pressure shows you how talented Jordan is. Courage straight back in for his second run. Oh, it looks like maybe he's getting into position right oh, there. Literally, I thought he was uh, straight back in, but that's how Courage Adams just gets from A to B. <laughs> Sat on a 79.16, currently in seventh place. But we all know what Courage Adams is capable of. So Courage has never got the top spot here at Simple Session, but in 22, he was third place on podium. In 21, he was second place on podium. And back in 2020, he was just outside with a fourth place, excuse me, fifth place. Courage Adams on course, going for the nose wheelie, getting redemption with the bar spin right there. James, that's always a sweet feeling for any rider to come back and in their second run, get that hard trick down. Yeah, Lionel saying courage knows Manny God. And Alan saying he's got big hopes for this run. First 30 seconds. Oh, oh just see his right hand just missing the bar as he was coming into fakie there. Went for that double bar spin, just guiding it around and then off the side. Steezy downside tail whip over that hip. Let's see if Courage maybe goes for a long manual combination. Bar spin, double peg, bar spin out. Kicking that whip again. Other direction, I believe, on that hip. Back at us, Courage. 
Double peg. Final thought, looking up at that clock. Gonna go back to the battleship. Oh, all right, all right. Got that manual 180. Hard to see from our perspective, but he might have touched his front wheel it down on that look manual. It like his front wheel dropped. Hopefully we'll see in the highlights. Little, I mean, I really hope he held that all the way across, but it does look... A little hard to see like. from our house, but what do you guys think in the comments? Do you, did his front wheel touch on that manual to 180? But courage, a lot of determination and focus. You can see the crooked grind bar spin to start things off. Going up on the nose manual, going the distance, bar spin off the battleship. And then right into that flare, that's the backflip 180. Double peg up on that nose, throwing the bars. Nice combo. And look at this, kicking right there, that tail whip, using his right foot, bringing it back, kicking it. Maybe we'll see another perspective. Bar spin, double peg, going down, and right there. Almost losing that grip, but he was able to keep it together. Moto Talk Jen in the chat, love that name, saying she's enjoying uh, Courage blasting through the course. And Witch Doctor saying, loving the live stream. Good luck to all these kings. Thank you very much for tuning in and to everyone else around the world right now. So great. The Simple Session has such an international audience. You are all part of the Simple Session family. Whether you're here in Estonia with us or watching from afar, but as Daryl has said many times, we highly recommend you get out here to really experience Simple Session in the flesh. You will not regret it. Take the steps. If you don't have your passport, go get your passport, because you can witness Courage Adams next year in the person. So just get your passport. We already know the dates, right? We're going to be 24th, 25th in Tartu. Yep. So you can get here in August, right? You got time, you got some time. Start planning though, but get the passport so you don't have to pay extra money to have it rushed and delivered. And then you can start looking up, wait, what would plane tickets be? You can start saving your money and you'll be joining us next year. Yeah, 100%. Well, Courage is down with Thule now. Let's see what he thinks of his two runs out here at Simple Session 2023. Courage Adams, you're an absolute power rider. Every year you come to Simple Session, you pull some pretty badass tricks out of your sleeves. <laughs> talk, talk about your two runs today. How did it go for you? Uh, uh, the two runs, the first one, I took it like a warm up because sometimes, I don't know, I don't know why, but finance also get like nervous and doing my, my stuff is a little bit difficult. But yeah, the second one, I'm, I'm glad, more or less everything. Uh, I did everything that I was having in mind, and yeah, one more year, one more experience, and we will see. Well, you're always happy. Every single time I see you, you're always in really high spirits. You're always really concentrated, prepping for your runs. What goes through your head before you go riding? Nothing. It's just like, I don't know, I do this every day. So for me, it's just something like, I don't know, like one more day in your life. And I think I grew up coming here in in Simple Station, Estonia. And for sure it's gonna be like a long time since I was coming here and the experience was sick. And I can experience that each year, I, I'm like growing up, you know, like, I don't know. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you every single year. It's gracias. such a joy to have around. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's so good to have Courage Adams back out here as per Rebecca Callywood saying, I'm booking it, I'm coming out. There we go, feeling inspired from what she's seeing today. Satyam BMX as well, shouts to you watching from India right now. Absolutely awesome. Still waiting for Courage's score to come in. Currently sat in seventh on a 79.16. Yeah, the judges have such a difficult job because they have to see 30 runs. Where do they fit with the other riders? And I just want everyone to know in the world of BMX specifically, the judges always give their all. It's such a difficult thing. And even you and I as commentators, I would never even go against the judges' scores because we're watching the event, but not as eagle-eyed as they are. Yeah. Right? Even from our perspective, it was hard to see if the wheel went down. All right, look at this, an 85 coming in. It's going to put Courage Adams in third place currently. So a big move up in score right there. Not enough to be in that top spot, but Adams is going to sit in third. 
Boyd is still going to hold on to that top spot, and Jordan will be in second. Could this be another podium at Simple Session for Courage Adams? We are going to have to see. Literally overtaking Murray by 0.77, and Murray still to go. So will we have an answer to that? Right now, though, we're going to get into Matt Ray once again coming off that Radio Bike Co. sub box. Play second at Simple Session in 2019. Yes. We'd like to get up there again this year. That red carpet, Drew Bazanzan style entrance right there again. Drew Bazanzan, five time Simple Session champion, cheering on Matt Ray right now as he gets a bar spin out of that crooked grind. 540 bar spin to a double peg 180 with a 180 bar spin out. I know the chat is going to have a lot of fire emojis because right now Matt Ray is lighting it up. Coming back at us, double peg, hop over. Now, James, if he can keep it together and keep all of these rapid fire hits going like that bar spin to bar spin back on the vert wall, right now he is in the pocket with a flare on one of the more difficult transitions. Going for that hang five, Estonia right now is going nuts for Matt Ray. These are very important moments that matter. 360, bar spin, final thought. Ice pick, coming in, and that is time. Big run, full pull, Boston's Matt Ray. I wasn't sure if he was looking at maybe taking that ice back to Fakey, but either way, a full pull, like you say, you could see in his eyes after run one as well. That 73.66 and 13th place wasn't what he came here to do. The second run, much more like it. Sparky's Distro, Florida, Ron Bonner, Ryan Cher, super hype, Sabrosa. Shadow Conspiracy cheering on. Matt Ray, 540 bar spin. Very difficult trick to do because you got to spot your landing, toss the bars. Look at the power, but look at the finesse. The 180 bar spin back into that transition. His front foot comes back, kicks that downside tail whip over the hip. Suicide no-hander, full extension, keeping that front end up over the hitching post. 360 gets it down and says, you know what, judges? I'm in control of this ride. I'll toss the bars into that smooth landing. Oscar Ram saying, Ray taking over the park. We are waiting to see what his score is. And in the meantime, let's check out what he has to say. Down with Thule. <laughs> Matt Ray, what an amazing run. I mean, compared to the first one especially, that was a massive improvement. I had a little hiccup at the beginning, but I just kept it going. and. I'm stoked. I'm winded, so we landed it. That's all that matters. And this is the second time at Simple Session. And the first time you were here was in winter time in 2019, and you landed second. Yeah, somehow. I was a stacked crew that year, but it was fun. And it's crazy because it was winter time then. So to be in Tallinn now, it's beautiful here. It reminds me of back home, just like almost fall time, but it's beautiful. Everyone's awesome here. Yeah. I'm very excited to see your score, but while we're waiting, you have a little good luck charm on your helmet. You want to show it? I love you. Said that. That's my baby girl back home, uh, Lana. I love you. I miss her so much, but she knows we're out here doing this. I'll bring her one time. So, yeah, this is my girl. Well, let's wait for your score. It should pop up in any second. There you go, your oh, second. Congrats, go. Matt. That's awesome. <laughs> Woo. Hey. <laughs> he putting in the work under a bit of pressure after his run one score just really wasn't up where he wanted it to be. An 88 dead. Matt Ray into second place. The top three getting shaken up right now. Jordan Godwin bumps down into third. And he's going to have to keep fingers crossed that he can keep his podium. Reed Stark, though, a guy with bags and bags of potential. You don't need me to tell you that. He's no stranger to a podium at Simple Session, and we'd love to see if he can do it again today. The long boy, Reed Stark, in control, gap to feeble, up on our Visit Estonia wall ride. Big transfer with that Smith grind. Look at the consistency for Stark as he checks in with a downside ice pick on our Radio Bike Co. sub wall. Stark charging back at us. Let's see if he can keep the momentum and flow going. Feeble grind going the distance into the transition. Hopping over the rail. He's almost at that halfway mark. 
And he is looking so good out here, James. As a judge, if you're looking at that creativity score, you're just going tick, tick, tick. Lines no one else is hitting, linking up the park super fast. Just really attacking it. And then consistent on that grind as well. A lot of confidence from Stark. He's charging the course. You see that he just finds all those little pockets, hitting his back wheel on the face of that wall and then sliding across the top. Look at this as he charges, goes up on top, this time with a double peg fakie. He's got time for a final thought. And that is going to be that second run for the BSD Safari Reed Stark. Yeah, Adam in the chat saying, loving the fast pace riding. Insane BMX Thomas saying, heck yeah, Alan, that was hot. G Lock, oh, that was clean off the wall. Yeah, absolutely. Reed Stark making it happen on his second run, just riding the park differently to everyone else. Up to Smith Grind there. Just managing to link that quarter pipe straight over into the rails. Just getting so many tricks done at high speed. There's the Smith grind all the way over and in. Oh, clipping slightly on the way in, but I don't think the judges will mind too much about that. Reed Stark getting ninth place in 22. I know he'd love to be a little bit higher. He actually got third place in 21, so keep that in mind. Much like Courage, he's never been on top of the podium, but he has been on top of that pillar. Bolt pegs hitting that vertical upright. And then you can see the expression on his face and excitement because he got a full pull out of that 60 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Easton saying first place run. He wants to see Reed up in first overtaking Boyd. And you can see that he's having a little dance with Thule. Let's see how he feels after that one. <laughs> Reed Star coming in hot from his second run. I mean, that was super fun. Oh man, I was so scared of that fakey pegs on the pole. I've been thinking about it for the last four days. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna send it. Just had to go for it. To celebrate, do you wanna do something on your kandama? You have it with you anyways. Let's do a trick. All right, here we go. Oh. Okay, second try. We give you three tries. There you go. <laughs> Woo! There you go. <laughs> Count it. Well, oh, man. Reed, you're always super fun to watch. You're always super fun to interview. Do you want to say something to the crowd, to the people who are watching? Oh, man. Just spread love and bless everyone as much as you can. Make dreams come true. Manifest it all. Yeah. And you're going to see your score in a second. There you go. You scored six. Well Ooh, done, Reed. Classic. Oh, thank you so much. Six Reed Stark, an 82.66, stepping up to second place, dropping his first run score of a 76. We move into the final four riders. Qualifying, of course, in fourth place. Coming out of Germany, Killian Roth, currently sat down in eighth. Want to see if he can step that up. The score was an 80.50. Killian Roth was grace under pressure, super laid back. But don't let that fool you. His trick difficulty is at the utmost forefront of BMX Street. His tires glued to the rails as we saw double tire rides and manuals. Right now he's just picking off the tricks as he jumps on double tire ride, 180 bar spin, yes! So difficult because you got to turn your shoulder and twist on that 180, but you got to be in a pin straight line. Again, we mentioned four pegs in case he doesn't get it clean and smooth, but Killian does, and this time dropping into his crank arm slide. Must have heard us talking in the booth and say, hey, I'm not going to use those pegs. I'm going to rock out with the crank arm. Oh, okay, okay. Stepping up that creativity, double peg, double tire, fakey over. Here we go, Killian Roth, manual through the kick with the 180. Oh, that would have been huge. That would have been absolutely huge. I think he knows. He's like, I'm down an eighth. I've got an 80.5. I've seen what the guys above me have had to do. So Stu Chisholm is currently sat ahead of him in seventh, and he's gone. Do you know what? Everyone above me has killed it. I've just got to go for it. Yeah, James, this is the moment. If you got any chips left in the game, you are pushing them into the center of the felt table because it is all or nothing right here to try to get up on top. Look at Killian Roth, crooked grind across Steezy coming off the side right there. Look at the double tire ride and then bonking back into that front peg toothpick style. 
Double tire and watch the handlebars as he 180 bar spins with a very clean 180 slider out. And here's that double tire ride dropping into the crank arm. And he's so laid back. Look at this. Stalls, hops up on top of this sub hitching post. And then he's, you know what? I'm gonna put it backwards. Boom. So laid back. What a great style for Killian Roth. So chilling. I think that final fall potentially going to hurt him. He could have really done with those points. But we'll see what his score comes in as. Will he improve on run number one? Looks like, though, he's still going for this. Oh, just slipping down to ice there. I think he's called time on it. He's been trying it for the crowd anyway. Trying to make it happen. And he does improve and goes ahead of Stuart Chisholm, an 82.16 for run number two for Killian Roth. Stu Chisholm bumping down to eighth. And with that, we move into our final three riders. And do you know what? Dare I say it, Joe Jarvis looks like he's got a bit of a game face on Daryl. Well, we are gonna see, because he has been consistent this weekend through qualifying, like we said, it's a focused Joe Jarvis we have not seen before and it's been working really well flexing the guns right there lightweight baby getting ready to just bring the heat and energy needs a 90.33 Boyd Helders in that top spot Matt Ray with an 88.00 and Jordan Godwin has that 87.5 here we go starting things off in a similar fashion look at this he is in control right now I like the confidence He's not rushed. Sometimes you can see riders when they go a little slower on the course, they can feel the pressure of the moment and they'll be a little bit rushed. And I like that he's in control and setting his tone. Yeah, 20 seconds in and he's looking much more calm, much more collected than run one. Yeah, just getting that one done. Off that driveway route, coming back through. Can he do it? Yes, yes, getting that balance point on the front, doing it for Federal, Substance, and 70s. Let's see where Jarvis is going to bring us. He's got 15 seconds, double peg to ice pick, clean on that exit, this time twisting an X up. He is just upping it a little bit from his first run. Maybe he'll put a big exclamation, 360 from the double peg. He's got time for a final thought, back to the rail, double peg. And that is going to be time <laughs> with that chicken butt right there at the buzzer. Jarvis making a lot of fans here in Estonia and on the chat. Yeah, great to see him get a full pour on that one. Clean up some of the areas that he fell on earlier on. Third place qualifier and currently sat in 10th place. We know that's not what Joe was hoping for today. Really managing to get it done, though, on run number two. And best run counts so he can forget that first run. So there you go, big 360 from the big man getting around. Look at the combination right there, the three off the rail again. It's a lot, very difficult because you got to get your body weight around as you're seeing right here, just following his shoulder, very clean on that re-entry. And this is the balance point, going for that hang five with that whiplash windshield wiper right back to pedals. Double peg down and watch the rear peg as just slides right off the rail. Rider left. So Joe Jarvis, the second of two runs, going to see if that score can step up. And it looks like he's jumping in with Thule for a chat, maybe two. Some smiley faces out there. Helmet on. The next generation getting inspired by Simple Session. Let's see what Joe Jarvis has to say about run number two. Joe Jarvis, here we meet again. You don't have a shirt on as always, but <laughs> definitely cleaned up your second run. Yeah, I tried my best. I had all my boys. Backing me up over here, screaming at me. I've got my best mate, Stu Chisholm, here. We just celebrated his birthday the other day, so I'm stoked to be out of him. I can hear him screaming down my ear. So he's the MVP of my weekend, and I think everyone else is too, and you'll see him tonight. I mean, Joe, you are like the personal hype man for every single rider out there, which I think is absolutely awesome. Let's talk about Simple Session vibe for you as well. What is your vibe at Simple Session? My, I just like to see everyone. It's, it's kind of hard sometimes to see everyone in the same place. So obviously Simple Session brings us all together and have the best time ever. Like, I love this place. 
Wonderful. The session wouldn't be the same without you anymore. <laughs> good to hear. <laughs> no, oh, don't. Good on me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joe. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. thank you, Joe. Soli getting covered in all of the riders' sweat. That's that's what she does. She gets stuck in. Joe Jarvis takes an 82 and does increase up to eighth place. Things are heating up. We got Calvin Kong, also Michael Laren checking in. Globally international riders cheering on, seeing if our next rider currently sitting in fifth with an 84.33. South Africa's Maury Lobser. Can he up the ante? We already talked about how consistent he was even in practice. He brought that flavor to our qualifying. And right now he has his sights set on Boyd Hilder trying to get a run in the 90s. Nose press to start things off. This time he had that full exit out. Gap to feeble, 180. So we're seeing a very different style than Hilder, but he is trying to just rack up as many hits as possible. And he's using those uprights of the rail, tweaking that 270 look back, losing the cap, but not losing his cool. He gets that 360 front wheel pressing oh man washing out on the wall but james again you're not necessarily penalized if you could keep your head in the game judges want to see what riders can bring and right now maury is back in it with that bar spin out from that nose press yeah for sure not necessarily penalized it's more as a rider you're like ah, oh, i've just wasted a bit of time that you know could really have done with that five seconds could have been another trick but he's got straight back in there final 10 seconds come on Murray Cape Town South Africa Red Bull Vans Odyssey BMX and fly looking for the bar and that is time so unfortunately having some bobbles but I got to tell you I'm so impressed with his riding really just kind of coming into his own in a lot of ways it's his second simple session being here in the finals. Recently put out a video called Sidewalls, which you haven't checked out yet, you should, but let's check in with this nose press coming around on that forward going G-turn. Get that gap to grind. I love the way he was able to bonk his back wheel in on the spin and then leak in that 270 look back. Cap flew off right here. Watch the front wheel. Watch the front wheel. Flawless execution. SPK crew saying South Africa, let's go in the chat. Lataro Marine as well saying love this guy's style. Yeah, so many people, big fans of Murray out here. Definitely a favorite amongst the riders as well. Worth mentioning that Murray is now the only person that could take out Boyd Hilda off the top spot and does not. He will stick with his run one score of an 84.33 and that confirms that for the second year running, Boyd Hilda is the BMX champion at Simple Session. This is going to be a victory lap, Daryl. Wow, Boyd Hilda lightning strikes twice, two years in a row. Simple session, Estonian fans are cheering on Boyd. Let's see if he puts on a full pull or just has a good time saying, you know what, I'm going to enjoy this moment. Hilder riding for Federal, Monster, Odyssey, Vans, Lux BMX, S1 helmets, and all the fans around the world from the Gold Coast in Australia. And Hilder's first run was a big one. Everyone showing love in the chat. Witch Doctor, Braz Etio. Yes, good style right there. And Boyd just having fun out there now. But still, Boyd having fun. He's <laughs> just riding to a ridiculous level, putting in a great run still. But you can see he's just taking the pressure off and he's like, let's just have a good time with this. Where's he going up here? Yeah, pulling that back in over the radio bike sub box. And a little whip to finish things off. And then holding the Manny. <laughs> Thought we might have seen him do a full lap of the park there, Daryl. Boyd Hilder two years in a row. He's actually a three-time Simple Session champion now because back in 2019, he won the park competition. And he's just showing you that each year he gets a little bit more experience. 
and a little bit better, if that's even possible. Right there, you see on his helmet, Pat Casey forever, much love to the Casey family and Pat Casey, who I know is really proud of his friend right now for riding so good. So, whilst you guys check out the highlights of Boyd right now, we're gonna head on over to the studio where we are gonna wrap up the results before we head down to the awards ceremony. So we're gonna let you kick back and watch this with the music. Session 2023 champion, second year in a row. What's going on through your head right now? Oh, I don't know. I'm catching my breath again, but I don't know why I did that war out again. <laughs> it scares the shit out of me. I mean, you had such an amazing first run, so many tricks, so it's such a clean ride. Uh, how do you do it? How do you prep for your runs? Uh, I slowly just piece it all together over practices, but so like happy to just sit all on the first go, stresses off the shoulders. Man, victory lap for everybody. Hope they liked it. So is your plan to be the next Rubens Hansen uh, with a five-time uh, champ in a row? Or what's, uh, how are we going to do in the next years? I'll have to give it a go, but Drew B is the man. It's going to be a hard one to beat. Well, congratulations once again. Absolutely amazing job. And we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Well, there we go. What a final it was, Daryl. What do you make of that? Boyd Hilder just letting it rip on his first run. I mean, he utilized the entire course that Nate Wessel designed. We talked about this not being necessarily a street course, not a park course. An ATV all-terrain vehicle was Boyd Hilder letting it rip out there. Had the grinds the big transfers, the whips, and that wall ride. Unbelievable, Boyd Hilder taking the top spot, our 23 champion. Such a fiercely fought battle. Let's talk through our top three. Jordan Goldwyn, what do you make of his run? Much respect, Jordan pushing BMX Street forward. We're gonna talk about the forward step, especially his feet generally rides with his left foot forward, but we saw that he switched his pedals up and would actually grind on his right side crank arm. Taking a look right here, as you see that crank arm slide to ice pick, and he had this beautiful transfer as he just grabbed the seat, twisted the handlebars around somewhere at that one-handed X mark. I love that he had to dodge traffic around that pole, double peg up, getting the 180 clean, and was very consistent and showing you how he can get stylish off that over Smith grind. Here was the 540, putting that fakie down clean on his execution. And we are seeing that crank arm around 2360, a big move right there. He knew he had to step it up. But coming in in second place, paying homage to Drew Bazanzan. We had that red carpet entrance of Matt Ray. I love that 270 bar spin coming down. Matt Ray had a lot of power, but also a lot of finesse, putting those two together with that bar spin 540. Look at the height on the 180, and I loved his control and the cadence of that bar spin hop back in. You see the finesse on that downside tail whip over the hip. And Matt Ray looking great as he shows that he's an all-around rider, getting that suicide no-hander. Here's another look at the 360. And again, popping the bar spin in. That is the difference of a rider and Matt Ray getting such a great score. And then coming in with the defending champion, two times back-to-back -back here at Simple Session at the Piccata Factory, Boyd Hilda. Hilder had it all, working the Radio Bike Co. sub box. Look at this wall ride, the thing that was so impressive about it, coming off the Pringles stack, but you don't have a lot of margin or space on either side of that sub box. You could easily pinch your tires on the top or clip the quarter pipe coming in. Boyd Hilder just worked his way through traffic and just landed so clean and so smooth off the wall. Amazing. Well, Daryl, I think awards are just about ready to get going, my man. So I'm going to send you down to the studio. Drop that mic. It's been an absolute pleasure being with you as per uh, Simple Session.
delivering once again. And a reminder as well, of course, that Simple Session 2024 is going to be taking place in Tartu, the home of Simple Session. We saw Matters Apps and AK ride in and checking out the city. We're gonna be back there with Tartu being the European city of culture of 2024. Simple Session is gonna be one of the headline events that are going down for next year in Tartu, and we can't wait to be there. As we were saying on the live feed, make sure you come and join us if you can. We'd love to have you there. And I'm going to hand down now to Andy, who's going to be joined by Daryl very shortly for the awards. All right, thank you very much. Uh, shout out to you, James, and shout out to you, Daryl. But we're taking things back here to the awards on the field of play, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to say, before we kick things off with the awards, I want to show some love to some special, special people. And those people are you guys. You guys! From the bottom of my heart, you are the reason why all those guys, riders, come over here, all the riders, join me and say thank you to all the thank you guys here at Simple Session Estonia. Thank you! You are the reason why all these riders are delivering the magic. And what a magic moment it was today. We're gonna to kick things off right now with the awards. The beautiful thing about Simple Session is that we always have some special awards. And these special awards, we're gonna kick things off with the LHV Best Estonian Rider. It's getting rewarded with a medal and 300 euros and a cash. So make some noise for the best Estonian, Tauno Tricks! Another special award, and it's the BMX Radio Bikes Best Trick Award. And we had three rad, rad Best Trick sessions today. One on that obstacle, one on this obstacle, and one on this obstacle. But it wasn't about only one specific trick. That rider was or will get rewarded with the overall award. So who impressed the judges the most combined out of all three? So with no further ado, please welcome the Radio Bikes Best Trick overall winner, Johnny Rex! One more time, let's hear it for Tano Schrutz and a Johnny Rakes with the first two awards. All right, well, we just witnessed Simple Session 23 Men's BMX Final go down. And we are gonna bring up and give a round of applause for our top six finishers. Coming in in sixth place, we saw unique high-speed transfers, grinds, and a double peg stall up on the pillars. Let's put it together for the long boy, doing double duty and DJing weekend, Reed Stark! We are continuing with the fifth place.
place. It was his second time over here in Tallinn, Estonia. Second time, and if not, I'm not mistaken, the first time in the finals. And what a performance he delivered. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome here, ladies and gentlemen, the Cape Town local, the Flyby Expanse Red Bull Rider. Give it up for Murray Lobson! All right, coming in fourth place, he's always a favorite in Tallinn, Estonia. High speed nose manuals, long linking combos, unbelievable riding put together. Give it up for Courage Adams. Okay, and now we are moving forward to the podium, to this position on the far right. It was an absolute battlefield out here today at Simple Session BMX Finals. And what an absolute charging animal the next guy was. I introduced him, unfortunately yesterday, with a Welsh English, and I very much apologize for that because there's no such thing. I know, right? So please have bear with me. So I make some noise. Third place for the We the People rider. Make some noise for Jordan Godwin. <laughs> All right, coming in second place. No stranger to Simple Session. Years past, we premiered some of his mind-blowing video parts here. In the final, he had a red carpet, Drew Bazanzan-esque entrance. His second run, when the pressure was on, he delivered. Doing it for his daughter, Lana, Sabrosa, and Shadow Conspiracy, Matt Ray! All right, one more time, let's give it up for Jordan and for Matt. And now it's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to the 2023 two-time back-to-back, third-time champion in Simple Session, the veteran rider, make some noise for a ball!
Wow, there you have it in the history books. Simple session 23. I want to thank everybody around the world for joining us. On behalf of James Therfall, Thule, Andy Zeiss, and the entire Simple Session family that worked so hard to make this event possible. We want to invite you next year to Tartu, August 24th and 25th for the European City of Culture. Until next time, my name is Daryl Now. Peace. Talent Estonia. There is no simple session without my brother, okay? We love him. Let's hear it for Daryl now. And let's keep that energy going for Andy the Z-Man.